Another Republican-led special committee investigating the deadly Benghazi attack in 2012. Sagar Magani has more. Democrats considered skipping it, in part because there have already been several congressional probes into Benghazi and partly because they consider this panel to be an election year effort to galvanize conservatives. California's Adam Schiff will now be one of five Democrats on the committee and says deciding to participate came down to not letting Republicans simply run the show. To make sure that this does not become uh, select Committee on Talking Points. The panel's chair, South Carolina's Trey Gowdy, says he looks forward to an investigation and a process worthy of the American people. Sagar Megani at the Pentagon. Lines of visitors flocked to the new September 11th Museum at Ground Zero in New York on opening day. Correspondent Warren Levinson reports. Visitors to the 9-11 Museum on its first day pronounced it emotionally overwhelming. Gina Deust, here from California, found herself moved by the exhibition of missing posters that sprang up in New York in the days after the attack. It's a lot of lost souls. You can't help but feel and connect to them. Not all the reviews were positive. Todd Fine of Washington found the description of the hijackers' motivations leaned too heavily on Islam. We can't understand their motivations just through religion. And that's what the museum does. The museum takes visitors from street level to gallery spaces seven stories below. Warren Levinson, New York. And a woman who disappeared a decade ago has been reunited with her family in California. At Donahue reports, a man is now under arrest on charges that include kidnapping. The woman is now 25 and contacted police in Santa Ana to say she was a victim of domestic abuse. She provided them with information that she was a missing person from our city from 2004. Under arrest is Isidro Garcia, the woman's mother's ex-boyfriend. He's accused of abusing the woman mentally, physically, and sexually. She's told by him her family doesn't care, her family's not looking for her, she's got nowhere to go, she doesn't speak English. The woman also told police she was forced to marry Garcia and he fathered her child. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Welcome back to the War for the White House Bunker. A troubling new report from the Shuttleworth Institute shows that due to Facebook, every potential candidate for the 2040 presidential race, no matter how smart or accomplished, is now completely unelectable. I'm standing in the 2012 Democrat grid with Jason Copeland. Jason, walk us through this. Yeah, we're looking at really a political crisis. The Democrats are currently searching uh, basements and uh, creepy backyard sheds huh. in search of somebody who was kidnapped at a young enough age that they have no online presence. That is a very interesting Could tactic. Be an option. And the GOP has been looking at this young man. This is a 20-year-old Jeevis Jones. He's currently living in Appalachia with his uh, fundamentalist Christian grandmother and no electricity. So, so Jeevis has no Facebook page. Jeevis does not. In fact, he's completely illiterate. And uh, the Republican Party has begun grooming him for uh, a possible candidacy in 2036. All right. Well, at least there's someone. Thank you, Jason Copeland. Thanks, Andrea. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Of course, plenty of ridiculous news tonight. Boston taxi drivers will be protesting ride-sharing service Uber because, well, they don't like new things and competition in the marketplace we'll uh, explain a little bit more about what's happening there of course you can take control of the airwaves bring up whatever's on your mind and shocking numbers and information about the police's reticence or perhaps reluctance or un non-interest in investigating rapes well i mean why investigate a rape when they could be busy stopping you for speeding or running through a stop sign so we'll give you some of those numbers. They're pretty uh, pretty shocking here in a little bit. Of course, you can, again, bring up whatever you want at 855-450-FREE. Johnson is with us here as our special guest host tonight. And you had somebody that you wanted to talk to on the air about artwork, copyright, mm -hmm. ripoffs. Yep. Uh, what, what sparked this, and who do you want to introduce? Uh, 
I want to talk to James tonight. Uh, he goes by uh, Spires as his uh, brand for his particular uh, designs uh, and art. And what I thought was a particularly interesting topic is, is that uh, he has had his art blatantly ripped off um, by a fairly large retailer. Um, this uh, this company, Urban Outfitters, is actually very well known for stealing smaller designers' artwork. It's become hmm. like a major thing. They've been posted all over all these blogs. And um, I saw uh, James post something about his art being stolen, and I looked at the back and forth between these two pictures, and I was just... A st- I mean, it's just so obvious. There's no possible other explanation. They just completely wholesale took his art and just made it into a product. So, so I have a picture of what you're talking about here. I'm mm-hmm. going to post that up to our Facebook, Google+, Plus, and Twitter so you can take a look at it. Let's bring James on the line here. Uh, James, welcome to Free Talk Live. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Sure. So you know Johnson? You guys are like old friends, or how do y'all know each well, other? Well, I think we've been Facebook friends for a long time. I was actually, I'm active, uh, or was more active in the past in sort of the anarchist community, and I made a series of anarcho-capitalist flags that um, spread across the internet maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know, even five years ago, and I think that's how. I think uh, you also might know my buddy Mike Martelli. Well, also, you're, I know your friends online also with Stefan Molyneux. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, yeah, I, I did listen to Steph for for a while there, especially in the early days. So I'm looking at the artwork here, and as I said, I'm I'm about to post it on our uh, Facebook. But how did you find out in the first place that Urban Outfitters had essentially lifted your artwork? Basically, what I'm going to post it shows on the left hand side uh, something that appears to be in one of their catalog photos, for instance, with a, a very nice looking uh, woman's behind uh, in your <laughs> inside your artwork as uh, sort of a, a skirt or something like that. And then to the right of that, it shows your original artwork. How did you even find out in the first place? I mean, the, presumably this company has a lot of products. So what, what were the odds that you'd even encounter this? Well, uh, I'm actually a pretty well-selling artist on uh, Society6. Um, I don't know actually what the metrics are, but I've heard through the grapevine that maybe I'm in the top 20th percentile of selling artists there. And so I get a lot of feedback on my work there. And on this particular design, it's called Trapezoid. Um, right underneath in the comments, someone actually posted a link and said, here, uh, great design, but I think someone ripped you off. Yeah, I got to say, I mean, your art is, I respect you a lot as an artist because, first of all, abstract modern artwork is not easy to do successfully If and, and have somebody look at it and just, it looks good. I mean, it's it's looks professional. It looks like it should be on, you know, uh, top 40, you know, musicians' albums and Prof- you know, it, obviously, Urban Outfitters thinks it's good too because they they went and you know basically stole from. Yeah, me. can't you just take this as a compliment? I could take it as a compliment, um, and I do. I actually do take it as a compliment that my stuff is actually good enough to be sold. Sort of, I think this skirt actually made its way into all the retail stores, or many of them. I'm not sure what the mm. pre- penetration metric is there, but I know that I've heard reports because everyone rallied around me basically when it happened. And told me that, you know, I've seen this in stores. It's not just being sold online. So to have that kind of, you know, widespread distribution without my knowledge on a design that's actually one of my top selling designs, it's actually very flattering. So I guess what do you what's the point of this, Johnson? I mean, some would say that as a liberty minded person, you shouldn't believe in copyright and logos and all that's a bunch of nonsense. So I mean, should something be able to be done about this? Or what, I don't know. That's what here? I question, and, and I want people to look at it, and I want there to be a conversation about it because, I mean, they did nothing to— They didn't, they didn't even take any, I don't know, artistic sort of liberty with it at all. They literally just took the graphic that I made and printed it on the skirts, and, uh, what- you know— yeah, I'm um, amazed at the colors here. They, um, the the triangles and the way the colors are placed with as far as the triangles. There's no change whatever. They could have taken their triangles. They could move them around. They don't. No, they didn't. They didn't even try. They literally um, just took what I made. I don't even know how they actually got the file. I, I am a believer, sort of, against copyright in a nuanced way. I mean, as an artist, we don't live in a free market, and so a lot of the times you have to look at the context of the situation. If I were to infringe, for instance, on on Urban Outfitters, for example, they would crush me because they would have the resources to do so. And you could say that's just or unjust, but um, 
I know as someone who worked for many years in retail, working long hours, I, I just don't want to go back to that life. And since I've had success with my artwork, I really just don't want to go back. And so basically my argument is if you want to look at IP from a top level perspective and say something like utility patents, for instance, like sort of hold a part of science hostage, right? And you can't innovate sort of technologically on a base level. I'm sort of one guy out there making patterns, sort of making a living on my own. It's like one man against the market, sort mm -hmm. of. And so I understand, like, in principle, IP is bad, but we don't live in a free market. And therefore, I have a hard time accepting that they should just be able to make all this money and I make nothing. When they could have just come to me and said, hey, you know, we'll pay you 10%. And I'd be very open to that. I would love the wide distribution. I would love to be flattered by having everything out there. I just want to be compensated, really. Right. And it's sad that I would have to go now through a legal process in order to get that done. Um, when, you know, I think by right, it's better if you just approach the artist first. I posed a question last night when I was, when I first saw this, I was angry. Um, and th the question that I posed is, why shouldn't James be able to walk into any Urban Outfitters, pick up these skirts, and walk out of the store with them? <laughs> no, and really, and say, and if like security stops and be like, no, I created these. I can prove that I created these first. These are mine. Because, well, because they aren't his. I mean, he created the pattern, and then they- How I does mean, Urban I, Outfitters I, have more of a role of creating those than he does? I would say- the amount of effort and time that went into his artwork and work and effort is actually larger than the amount of effort and time that they put into producing the actual product. Well, I don't know if that's this, true. Th this but. this goes back to that thing, you know, if you make a sculpture out of a piece of rock, but it's not your rock, you know, whose sculpture is it? Um, they probably I have agree that. that you know, they I, probably... I wouldn't agree that the skirts actually are mine. I would say that the... The design on them was produced by me, and I would love to be compensated for right, that. Yeah. Right. Um, there's I also just... another nuanced layer to this where I think they bought the skirts from a third-party vendor who actually ripped me off and then sold them. And it could be or not be that uh, Urban Outfitters knew about this. Yeah, that's However, a good point. from my perspective, if you're a major company with a lot of resources – you should have a better buying process, maybe. Uh, maybe you should, you know, vet who you're getting your product from a little more. I mean, you have the resources to do that. It's kind of like a, a lazy buying decision at that point. And so it's a management problem. It, it may or may not have been intended to be a ripoff like that. And to me, that's really not the issue. The, ins the issue is it happened, and therefore I would love to be compensated for it. James, where can people go to find more of your work if they want to take a look at it and hopefully not walk away? Well, I... I, <laughs> I I have a, a few websites up, actually. If you want to purchase something, the best way to do that is to go to society6.com slash spires. Um, that's where I make most of my sales. Also, um, my actual website is spires.ws. Spires, S-P-I-R-E-S dot W-S. If you'd like to check out more of his artwork, you can see the comp... Uh, the comp uh, compilation comparison comparison thank you uh between his work and the urban outfitters skirt on our facebook page and thanks uh, for the call james appreciate you checking in here tonight more coming up your thoughts welcome gold bond presents shaquille o'neal so i'm hanging out with my gold bond buddies and they're like shack shack great job with the gold bond powder spray people love it so i'm soaking in the good vibes kicking off my shoes next thing i know they're coming out with a new foot powder spray boom Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body. And new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like Toka Djembe drums for only 19 bucks, or Squire Stratocaster electric guitars for only 89 bucks, or a digital reference mic for just 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, May 21st, 2014, gold opened at 1288.50. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1335.40, 667.74 for ounce, or 333.85 for a quarter ounce. That's 1335.40, 667.70, and 333.85. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? 
Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. I have a license. That means you're protected. That's nonsense. Just because somebody has a license doesn't mean anything about their business acumen. It doesn't mean anything about their ability to satisfy their customers. It essentially means that they paid the state money. And and jumped through the hoops. Yep. And filled out some paperwork. Exactly. And that's all that the license means. But yet it has this aura of legitimacy to it. Oh, it's a license. And they paid some money to the state. And so therefore they must be a good company. It's absurd. And absolutely. And what it does is it depletes the pool of people out there that would be doing business in that particular way. You know, they just can't get up the money to get the license. They can't get up the money to get the fancy vans and all that other stuff that's involved in being a contractor or whatever. I'm I'm thinking of plumbers right now, I guess. And different plumbing jobs require different levels of skill. When you're talking about just a regular thing, why can't you have a handyman guy come in and do it? Why does he have to be licensed? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'd love to have your comments on the idea of intellectual property. In this case, the gentleman we had on the beginning of the show, somebody that Johnson knows, uh, an artist named Spires, he created a triangular sort of pattern. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the company called Urban Outfitters has basically lifted his pattern, put it on a skirt, and sold out of said skirt. Uh, Saifei is one of our producers, sent me a link that uh, he believes they have completely sold out on their website. And Spires, the artist, uh, James, a.k.a. James, who was on the line with us a moment ago, says he would just like to be compensated for his efforts. But Ty in Tennessee says on our Facebook profile, give me a break. Now someone believes they have intellectual property in the form of how triangles are arranged and colored. Johnson, what do you what do you say to that? I mean, uh, this guy doesn't own the idea, does he? The idea of what the triangles, the triangles? being triangly. Uh, you know, there are certain things for when when a pattern is, is specifically, you know, you have something that's so complex, it you get to the point of where it's ridiculous to say that somebody didn't put work and effort into something and that it wasn't just copied. I mean. They could have arranged triangles in their own way. Why did they have to steal his artwork? Why did they have to make a copy of it? What you know, if there wasn't any benefit th- to them to do that, then why did they go and do it? But well, they I'm not didn't sure steal about it, steal right? Here. I mean, they they borrowed it. They they copied the they idea. Did they I compensate mean, him for it? Did they no, ask but him whether or not? Do you compensate everybody for every torrent you ever downloaded and watched? No, but should you necessarily? Mm, Maybe I would be, you should. Sure. 
I've always been willing to watch ads on content mm -hmm. when the web when the companies put that up on their website and you know are. But is it stealing you when you download a uh, you know your whatever favorite television show and so watch this it is on a tour? this is sort of the um, okay <clears throat> the the problem here is is that a big company took a pattern which is a replicatable very replicatable idea pattern is mm -hmm. um, from a little guy mm -hmm. and we have been socialized and inculcated with the idea that the big guy is somehow worse, um, less trustworthy or whatever, has has the means and so should take care of the little guy. Whereas when we listen, you know, watch a movie or listen to a song that we didn't get through the channels that the you know producers of that movie or song wanted us to get it through, we're like, hey, you know, we're not profiting off of this and and, and those kind of things. So I mean, there's a there's a different narrative going on. Well, in this case, the company is profiting, right? Urban Outfitters right. is selling these. But things. you're profiting when you watch a movie too. You're enjoying the movie. Mm -hmm. Without and having paid for it. Without having paid for it. So I think that this is, I mean, I think this is in particular a very interesting case. This is the kind of thing I argued for when I used to bother arguing with uh, people about intellectual property. And I don't anymore, generally. Um, because I think that it's a, it, it's a difficult situation. What Urban Outfitters should be done is held to account in the marketplace for this. Because right. this is crappy behavior. Yeah, they're scumbags. That's the point that I really want to make is that, you know, doing that, you know, while while I don't necessarily support the idea of a government getting involved, I do definitely support outing these scumbags. Well, wait a minute. As Spires, the artist, uh, pointed out, it may not even been Urban Outfitters. Maybe they bought this from a supplier and the supplier Still came to them. Still makes them scumbags because they've done it repeatedly. Okay, well, uh, I mean, maybe the supplier comes to them and says, look, this is what we have, okay. and they don't think, oh, well, we should run a Google search on every one of these patterns okay. just to make sure they didn't mm, take it from somebody. Maybe they should be doing that considering they've been getting extremely negative press about it for years. All right, so Ian, <laughs> what you're saying is dumb, okay? What? I'm sorry. Well, maybe they did this, and maybe they did that. Well, tell you what, once he can go show them, hey, this is my pattern, they should... If they want, if they don't want to look like a bunch of a-holes, mm -hmm. yeah. then they need to, oh, can we talk to you about some kind of compensation? Look, you know, this is kind of how the, the how finances they know work didn't for us. Them off. You're doing the libertarian opposite of statist extremes here is what you're doing. Now, how do they know <laughs> if he comes to them and says, hey, guys, that's my pattern. I'd appreciate it if you gave me some compensation. How could, why couldn't they say to them, well, we got this from vendor XYZ in China, and how are we supposed to know you didn't look at their catalog and borrow Clark, their if idea? if there weren't any rules about weapons, everyone would have a nuke. <laughs> I'm the, saying you're doing the, you're doing the sadist yeah. extreme, like you're taking something, you're taking it to the libertarian extreme. So you're saying they shouldn't unlikely. communicate with this guy. They shouldn't I spend didn't say that. 10 freaking minutes communicating with this guy. I he didn't says, say oh, that. Hey, no problem. Let me bang out a real quick uh, JPEG here with the date of when I produced this mm -hmm. shouldn't be too difficult since I put it up on my website. We can get third-party corroboration in here. Not a prob. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, look, look, uh, Mr. Is it Styles? Is that right? Spires. Spires. Mr. Spires, we're willing to talk to you about this further, but if we find that this is a rabbit hole, we're going to, you know, we, we want you to put $200 in escrow for wasting our time or something like that. There's all kinds of conversations that can be had here, but you're going the, well, what if this and what if that? I guess they just can't get on the telephone with somebody. I didn't somebody. say they couldn't get on the phone with them. I said, couldn't they claim that they have the design first. Let's let our lawyers hash it out, and then they'll just eat well, up just all it. the profits. He can't afford a lawyer. And neither can they. Oh, I bet they can. They're a big corporation. Yeah, but they they're likely have lose. them on staff. Yeah, but lawyers cost a yeah. lot of money, and it's just not worth it. So, I, look, man, I mean, this is – look, if somebody can put together – and Johnson's making the claim that there, uh, there's some evidence that this Urban Outfitters folks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rip people's designs there's off actually on a, a regular basis. several uh, companies that do this. Then we can just put together a web page that shows how these uh, people get ripped off because this is a very motivating picture we have here of uh, the Spiros guy's uh, art and then this skirt. And we just show those things back and forth. Um, you know, hey, look, these companies are ripping people off. Consider that when you buy. And that'll cost them money in the marketplace. I don't know, but I can tell you that it would be it'd be very upsetting. I mean, if you spent however long it takes to make a painting, and I don't know the answer, and then somebody goes and just takes the pattern directly from, I mean, I was looking at every single one of these triangles. They're the same color. Mm -hmm. It's 
you know, I mean, I've it's been disgusting. rolling through when I when I was thinking about this last night because obviously I did research into this and I have an article on it as well about some of the things that we haven't necessarily considered about the legalities of this this sort of thing. Um, and I was thinking in terms of well, what kind of creative thing can we address here in terms of say Free Talk Live? Well, Free Talk Live has a pattern that goes out every day. It's called the MP3 that is the audio file of the show. And what sort of product could be made of that? You know, what if somebody, uh, you know, uh, took the file, changed the name, and was selling Free Talk Live. I oh, mean, one I thing know, they could you know. do is they could take our show and uh, they could override all of our commercials if they sure. wanted to. The uh, radio stations out there, we ask them to follow a certain clock. What if they where- did that, not only did that, but also changed the name so that the, no one could identify. Like, the show is I- exactly identical to Free Talk Live in every way, mm-hmm. except for they cut off your names, the name of the show, somehow. We're just, let's... In art, it's much easier to do this. In audio, obviously, it would be extremely difficult. But let's say the technology was to the level where they could fake your voice saying a different name of a different show, Mm -hmm. and they created a different website so that it was exactly your show, but it wasn't tied to you, and it went to a completely different website, and they were making money off of it. They were charging people. And they had their own private. Yeah, I you know, really wouldn't care. I mean, it, it, it's I a, don't. It's a dead end trying to talk to him about this yeah. stuff, John. I've got better things to do than spend my time getting into legal battles with people. I'd rather focus on creating my craft and but doing what I what do. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a legal battle. I'm talking about is Spending that ethical? Any time. Is it ethical? And, and should I would either have be to? Do, I would either have to do something about it or not. And I'm yeah. not interested in doing anything about it. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. I've got better things to do with my time. More coming up here. You can take control. Share your thoughts on IP. Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Memorial Day is a time of remembrance of our fallen soldiers who died for our freedom. In honor of these brave men and women, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is offering huge discounts on several great products. AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is veteran-owned and operated, so stop what you're doing and support a like-minded company and save a few bucks at the same time. The Memorial Day sale starts right now and ends on May 26th at midnight. Honor above all, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? 
to unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save. Call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Username there is lrn.fm. Set a contact request before you do that if you haven't already done so. It'll be approved, and it'll be easy for you to get through to us from that point on on Skype. With you tonight, it's Ian here. And Johnson. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. And also, remember that Free Talk Live is brought to you by the Free State Project. Coming up here in just about a month. The Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's June 22nd through the 29th. That's a Sunday through a Sunday. It's a week of fun in the woods of northern New Hampshire, right up by the beautiful White Mountains at a place called Rogers Campground. There will be probably well over 1,000, maybe close to 2,000 people this year at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Likely going to be everything from families to couples to single people and all kinds of things to do for everybody. I mean, whether you've got kids or not, there's a lot going on at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And the theme this year is do it yourself. So there's going to be a lot of uh, training, a lot of uh, information being given, a lot of kind of how-to classes. Like there's even one class where you can build your own gun. Uh, so you can go to porkfest.com and check out the details, get signed up there. The tickets are available in advance through the end of this month. So if, if you buy them online, you can get them at a better deal than if you go and you wait until the week of Porkfest and you walk up and buy them at the desk. So go and grab your tickets now at porkfest.com. It's a perfect opportunity to come up, check out New Hampshire, experience what it's like to be amongst a community of people who actually understand what freedom means. Have you mentioned yet the uh, the fact that there's going to be somebody from the show Chopped? I'm not familiar with that, no. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's actually... Is that a cooking show? Yes, it? it is. On the Food Network, there is a, a show where uh, chefs compete uh, through several rounds to make you know a full course meal they compete on, on each course for um, for you know a a breakfast a lunch and a dinner or no I say I'm sorry uh, appetizer dinner and dessert and um, each round someone gets eliminated so they start with four competitors until they're mm-hmm. down to one and um, one of the winners of the chop you know one of the chop champions is going to be there for the one pot cook off and, oh, wow. and assisting the judge and apparently they may also be doing some sort of a chopped like event. So if you're a chef or a budding chef, this pork vest is going to be for you. So well, there's always the one pot cook off, which is very popular from what I understand, and so many different ways that you can eat while you're there as well. Usually people come, they kind of set up shop, they'll accept cash, some of them will accept silver, many will accept Bitcoin in order to sell you delicious food and drink and uh, and who knows what else. So go to porkfest.com, P O R C F E S T.com. We look forward to seeing you there. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, we've got Joe on in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Joe. Hi. Uh, I want to just comment. Um, I first off think that philosophically copying can never be the same thing as stealing, just from just from a voluntarist perspective. I'd agree. But uh, I, I think that uh, it's my opinion that a lot of these businesses um, are only as big as they are because of the prior enforcement of IP. And just the state structure in general. I want to tie it in with something you guys were talking about yesterday, which is the whole FCC thing and net neutrality. It's sort of an it, it, it kind of gets into a, a bad situation where okay, so there's some of these companies like Verizon are probably bigger because they have monopoly contracts either with local municipalities and stuff like that. So now because there's a less competitive environment the temptation is well we there's no other choice but to use the state structure to try to combat it but i think that's a bad idea i think it's the same thing with ip is there's a temptation to well these big companies have already gotten there so now i have to go sue them 
um, I think you kind of lose the moral high, moral high ground at that point. Um, you might make some money, but I think it's going to be harder to argue uh, for a libertarian perspective. People can point out, uh, you know, your hypocrisy in that situation. Well, I think that, uh, you know, this is the, the whole situation is difficult. And I think that it really comes down to the size of the people in play here. And it's a um, it's an aesthetic issue. We don't like that this big company, Urban Out- Outfitters, what well, seems like a big company. I mean, it's not big by, you know, GE standards, um, but a larger company than this artist who uh, makes his uh, money online just sort of selling stuff. It looks, you know, I mean, it looks coarse and um, and and uh, like like they like they stole it, but I don't think they did steal it. There's a story about out of Orlando, and this is from many years ago, where a, a, a nursery school put some Mickey Mouse uh, characters up on the wall, um, some of the characters from uh, Disney, and it was for the kids. And for whatever reason, the big rat found out about it, and uh, then they, uh, <laughs> you know, must de- be stopped. demanded that the nursery school not use their, you know, what if something terrible happens to the nursery school and they've got our characters on the wall? It could be anarchy. And, um, you know, so they made him take it down. Well, Hanna-Barbera saw the opportunity, and this was before Disney bought Hanna-Barbera, uh, went there and painted, uh, you know, Huckleberry Hound and the little pink uh, panther guy or whatever on the wall for the nursery, and the kids got professionally painted um, people on the wall. This is an aesthetics issue to me, not an issue of sort of morality. I think patterns are patterns, but, um, I, you know, for instance, we can think about the Queen situation and Ice Ice Baby, you know, the, the chorus line, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Um, now, that's just another a pattern. Well, it's a sample of a pattern, right? Um, and Vanilla Ice probably had to pay to use that. Well, I don't think he did from no. what, what I understand. There's a, certain, really? there's a certain length of time for, for sampling where if you're under a certain amount of time you can sample for free he got really? sued yeah. on that one um and so that was it was a problem uh, from the very beginning from relatively quickly using mm-hmm. that uh, that baseline now he claimed that his baseline was different than their baseline because it was it wasn't doom 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 da doom doom it was doom 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 da doom doom right and and you Sounds know the same to me it was the same <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, these are just I, I get that they're just patterns, and I don't disagree with they're just patterns. I think that this comes down to our socialization going back forever and ever, um, you know, as far back as the David and Goliath story, if not farther back than that, I'm sure, that we don't like the the big guy taking advantage of the little guy. I, I think that um, this, I think everybody can agree, though, that uh, the government probably isn't the best way to, to deal with these situations. The two examples that I'll give for, well, how am I going to uh, sell video games and and promote my mp3s well a lot of it should be cultural and and even just market oriented um there's a there's a program called steam that you can install on your computer and you can buy games through it and it actually mm-hmm. is sort of a voluntary drm system that you install now they give you chat drm stands for digital it, uh, rights management yes yeah and but so in that sense that you technically they can restrict your access to games they never do it but they give you incentives. They give you awards that you can do. And, you know, you, you I usually buy all my games through there. The second thing is Spotify. I don't really download MP3s anymore, not because I think it's wrong or because I'm afraid of being sued. I'm, I, it's just Spotify is actually more convenient than, than downloading. So that's, I think, and the what is Spotify? Is uh, it's just an online uh, streaming service. It basically kind of works like iTunes. You uh, you can pay, there's a free version, but I pay 10 bucks a month for mm. Uh, with uh, with no commercials, and you look song, you look up any song you want in any order, and you can make playlists. And they have they have everything. I I, I very rarely yeah, they've got a very massive library. That. Very cool. All right, Joe. Anything else you want to share tonight? Oh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Appreciate hearing from you at eight fifty five four fifty free. You know, another detail about this conversation we were having earlier regarding mm-hmm. uh, the fashion industry. In this case, Urban Outfitters allegedly ripping off products, uh, ripping off designs or borrowing, as some might say, uh, copying the designs of artists without giving them compensation. Uh, As I recall in past conversations about copyright, 
you actually don't have copyright applying to the uh, the fashion industry. Fashion designers cannot copyright their designs. If uh, Dolce and Gabbana or whoever comes out with a design, you could you, you could borrow that design and make your own version. I don't of it. think that that's accurate because that's I mean, accurate. people have been going after the Chinese companies for a while for their. Mm, okay, uh, so what you can do? You're is, talking about brand infringements, not designs. Okay, yeah, right, and so point. and that's what uh, you know to some extent that's. You know, arguably, maybe what happened here. Okay. There's a difference between graphic design and apparel design, too. We right. need to make that distinction. Yeah. So if you draw a picture, you can, it, the picture's, you know, the picture's yours, right? But if you, uh, I mean, you know, a pattern is a picture, it's the cut of the clothe, clothing that can't be there's um, a, copyrighted. There's a whole level of like legal land stuff that we haven't oh, yeah. even touched on yet that I'd like to. It's all crap, too. Bit. Also, uh, coming up here in moments, we may actually have a, somebody checking in from Thailand where apparently martial law has hit. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. 855 450 3733. This is Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing yeah, you, you know, to shed pounds in days with just one capsule here. a day. A Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Right, Again, we yeah. have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. 
By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-453. That is the ProXPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. And you can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You know, Bitcoins are doing pretty good the last couple of days. They're up over 500 bucks. They've been kind of sitting at around $450 for a couple of weeks. And we're starting to see them hopefully shoot up again. Maybe they'll continue. But you never know what's going to happen tomorrow or in the next hour with the Bitcoin universe. The trading never stops. It just continues 24 hours a day. You've been thinking about Bitcoins. You've been maybe following the news about them, been curious. You've heard us talking about them. And maybe you're finally ready to pull the trigger and get one or a fraction of one. You don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. You can, in fact, buy less than $40 worth if you want over at cashintocoins.com. When you buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoins, there's no fee at Cash Into Coins. Why is that? They just want you to try Bitcoins out. They really want you to get into this world, and that's why they're offering no fee at less than $40 worth of Bitcoins. When you buy them through cashintocoins.com, you can do more than 40 You can do far more uh, than $40 worth, and then it's a very reasonable, I think, 3% fee. It was the last time I checked, it was 3%. Uh, it's easy, it's safe, fast, legal, inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. You can use a money order, check, or wire transfer, so go take advantage of those great rates and if you are paying uh, buying enough Bitcoin to have a fee attached to the transfer, uh, you can actually donate a portion of the fee to charity. So really, it's an amazing way to turn your cash into coins. Go to cashintocoins.com. As we go to the phones, your calls and thoughts, we can come back to intellectual property here. But actually, uh, George is on the line with us, actually calling from Thailand. George, are you with us? Yes, I am. And I'm you- calling in from Bangkok. Yep. Bangkok. Now, I've heard there's some kind of uprising slash military uh, coup going on. What's happening there? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's basically a martial law sort of thing. They're, they're, the military got sick of a bunch of corruption there, so they took over everything, and they imposed a curfew on the streets between 10 p.m. and 5 in the morning. So between that time, everything is dead, even the highways and stuff stuff like that. Mm. I'm just, I was looking at it from my hotel room all the way up at the 59th floor of, this, of the same hotel room where they filmed The Hangover Part 2, by the way. What? Um, you're actually in the exact same room. Uh, what... Oh, not the room, the, but the hotel. Gotcha. So, what? Um, why are you there right now? I mean, are are you frightened? Is this a scary situation? Are you in danger? What's your status? Part, uh, nah. All right. When when we first flew in, um, a friend and I, when we first flew in, we were driving. It looked like business as usual. In fact, I didn't hardly see any military vehicles at all during the curfew. Though I saw like a military transport truck or two going around like that but overall that's actually been business as usual you just do not want to be um walking around the streets wearing a shirt that's all red or a shirt that's all yellow because there's these two factions of political parties that have a red shirt or a yellow shirt and oh, wow. uh, they're, trying to, they're trying to kill each other and i want to want to be a red shirt anyway because you know how, how red shirts fare on star trek so <laughs> <laughs> but the yellow <laughs> but the gold shirts do pretty good Generally, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, if I were to put money down, I would bet money on the yellow, yellow gold shirts. <laughs> in this place so, winning out. So, I mean, pretty much everybody knows you go out after ten o'clock at night, you're subject to arrast. I mean, so basically, you're uh, yeah, stuck yeah. in the hotel. You're kind of at a curfew. Yeah. Yeah, it's a curfew. Luckily, though, like I said, I'm staying at this really nice hotel where they filmed that second Hangover movie, and um, they got a nice rooftop bar there. They're gonna party there, and um, really beautiful views of the city here. This place is this city is stupid huge. It takes so, like half an hour to the air, airport, but only five hundred baht, which is like twenty dollars <laughs> and stuff like that. And that's like too shabby. 20, twenty something miles, at least twenty five miles away. So that's interesting. I mean, uh, some people were saying uh, there was another guy that we know who had just left uh, Thailand right before this went down mm-hmm. and was expressing relief. And you're saying it's no big deal. Like, you know, just stay inside at yeah. night and don't wear red or gold and you'll be all set. 
Yeah, because it looks to me like business as usual. When after we settled into the hotel and we went looking around, you know, town, just you know, walking around doing shopping, n- noticed all the Seven Elevens in this town. I forgot how popular that chain is in this country, but um, yeah, it's like it just looked like business as usual. There were there were like soldiers at every single block with machine AK forty sevens. You know, so did you find it, uh, so, did you find the creme de la creme of the chess world in a show with everything but Yul Brynner? Not yet, but I'll keep it posted. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the call. Oh, wait, to- I've, oh. I've got a question yeah. real quick. So I wonder how many how many people are there that are walking around in red or yellow shirts? Honestly, I haven't really noticed that they've been paying attention. I, I only found that out after we settled in for the night, so I got to go and find so out. So you haven't mm-hmm. seen any. So it's not like you know you're ready yep. at, at a moment's notice if somebody over with a red or a yellow shirt is walking by to be able to duck yeah. for you know cover from potential. Well, like you got hail you of gotta, gunfire. I don't think they're gonna be like um, just shooting out in the streets. I, I haven't seen any reports about that anyway. Right there, you just um, like I said, it's business as usual. I don't, I don't think they've seen anyone with a solid red or yellow shirt anyway. Um, yeah. While I was walking the streets yesterday, so I mean it's pretty peaceful. It's not like it's not like Syria, for example. You know, it's just you know like one of those not a shot fire cues, and um, the main political parties don't want it to come to that because they know where their bread is buttered. They don't want to scare away the tourists. That's why, for example, Thai Airways, for example, there was all these major comp- t- companies that are going on strike, you know, for better wages. But Thai Airways was like, no, we're not joining you because we know where our bread is buttered. We don't want to mess right. up the tourism. George, thanks for checking in, man. Glad you're okay. Glad everything's working out over there. Enjoy the vacation. Hopefully, nothing will uh, will get worse while you're there. Appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, it's like Mexico. What time is it, by the way, right now in Thailand? What time? It is um, 11 hours ahead of you, but because of the daylight savings time, if it wasn't for that, would be exactly 12 hours ahead. It's like almost 7 a.m. So like 8 a.m. Ian went to government school. You got to do the math for him. Like nine yeah, o'clock? Yeah, it's just like 12 hours. So, yeah, if it's, it's, if it's 9 p.m., if it's 7 p.m. there, it's 7 a.m. here. Cool. Hey, thanks for the call, George. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3750. Hours. <laughs> if, it's 7 a, if it's 7 p.m. here and it's 7 a.m. there, that would be a 12-hour time difference. That would be. What diff- what that's, why I asked him, that's why I asked him if it was seven there because it's almost eight here. It's still just <laughs> as scary, and you'll be just as dead if you have the wrong color shirt on. Sure. Yeah, let's go and talk to Ty, and he is in Tennessee. Ty, and also on Skype. Go ahead. Hey, I just uh, called about the IP situation with the skirt yes. and the artwork pattern. The I think the big question to ask is uh, where is the harm? Did the... Uh, sales of the skirt take away sales of the artwork you know i don't think there's been any real harm done it sure I could think- it sure could how um okay so there's a couple of reasons and this is i, I want to get into some of the other legal issues first but th- i'll just jump right onto this one so let's say the the whole legal thing about this is that um what these companies are doing, and this is a sort of like secret thing, is that they're actually looking for artists who haven't copyrighted their work. In other words, artists who haven't submitted to the government to protect their artwork. And so what happens is they go after these artists, right, because then they can just take the art and print it on products and do whatever they want with it. Now, let's suppose that the artist says something or tries to do something or, or tries to sell the artwork on their own products, right? Or maybe they say, oh, look, this is successful, um, this particular uh, product is a successful product, so why don't I print my own skirt, you know, or whatever, and print a product? So then what the company can do, the, the larger company with a staff of lawyers can say, hey, we made this product with this dress with this thing on it. And then they could also potentially, once they gr- get, grab the file, they could submit the exact same art that's created by the artist to the copyright office and copyright it. And pr- and protect that artwork even this though they didn't patent. create it. it. It's not a patent. It doesn't work that way. If you can show, it sure can. It you, sure can. It, it well, you can. The, the, what you're talking about is being excluded by the cost of of being a, of getting a lawyer. Whereas, um, I mean, the fact is, is that when it comes to copyright, if you can show that you had copyright to, or if you created something before somebody else copyrighted it, you will be awarded in in court. Whereas with how, a patent, right. what it comes down to is, is the first who person first. who got the, uh, the sure, piece of paper from the government. Sure, but how extremely did how extremely difficult is that to do that with digital artwork? I I here's that point. Point. That can't be that here's difficult. A, here's another point. It looks much better on that girl's butt than it would look on my wall. I totally agree with that. Sure. 
And now, you know, isn't so- it also possible that some girl could? Uh, I mean, first of all, I think it's very unlikely that the same people who see this pattern on the the skirt at Urban Outfitters are going to be in the market for some wall art. But I suppose there's a possibility that somebody who has purchased the skirt will find the artwork. Then maybe it'll actually she'll want to buy the artwork because she's already had it. And oh, she'll think, wow, I can get this on my wall sure, too. Sure, absolutely. Okay. And actually, the other thing that I want want to say on this is that so you know, maybe it'll someone, help his sales. You, sure, and the artist can actually also take this potential and leverage this and say, hey, look, my art has been featured in such well-known retail brands right. as Urban Outfitters. There the question becomes, what happens, though, then if Urban Outfitters uses that to fight against the artist? What happens if they, you, you know, they're copywriting the artwork and then it really becomes stealing because then they're using the force of government against Well, that would be artists. bad. Is there oh, any yeah, other? I agree. That, that would be bad. If the, is but there any evidence? Ty, issue. I know you had much time. If you want to hang out, we can bring you back. Is there any evidence they've been doing that? No, uh, there's only the claim that they've been so borrowing artwork and reselling it as clothing, not that they've gone after the artists right. themselves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts on intellectual property or whatever's on your mind. Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.58 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,298 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $509. Antiwar.com reports, President Obama has informed Congress that approximately 80 troops have been sent to Chad in a support capacity to take part in the search for 276 kidnapped Nigerian schoolgirls. The troops, mostly Air Force personnel, will handle surveillance flights and drone flights over the area along the Chad-Nigeria border where the girls are believed to be held. The Predator drones are now being flown out of the Chad capital of N'Djamena and officials say the troops maintaining those drones will remain until the kidnapping situation is resolved. U.S. flights have been scanning the area for 10 days and have provided no details on what, if anything, they found during that time. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. A Missouri man, Russell Bucklew, who requested his execution be videotaped, has had his execution postponed. The Washington Post reports, on Tuesday, several hours before Bucklew was scheduled to die, a federal appeals court halted the execution. The panel from the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit in Kansas City granted the 60-day stay. However, a few hours later, the full appeals court ruled that the execution could still proceed. A short time after that, Justice Samuel Alito halted the execution again, this time writing in an order that the execution would be stayed pending further order from Alito or the full court. On Wednesday night, the U.S. Supreme Court granted the stay of execution, halting the execution with a three-sentence order that sent it back to the lower courts. The order reads, The application for stay of execution of sentence of death presented to Justice Alito and by him referred to the court is treated as an application for stay pending a appeal in the Eighth Circuit. The application is granted pending the disposition of petitioner's appeal. We leave for further consideration in the lower courts whether an evidentiary hearing is necessary. Bucklew's attorney said in a statement that she is extremely pleased and relieved that the stay was granted, stating, this stay of execution will give the lower federal courts time to consider Mr. Bucklew's claims that his execution would violate his rights under the Eighth Amendment to be free from cruel and unusual punishment. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. The Hill reports major tech companies are walking back their support of a bill to rein in government surveillance after the legislation underwent changes as it heads to the House floor. The Reform Government Surveillance Coalition said in a statement Wednesday, the USA Freedom Act, written by USA Patriot Act author Jim Sensenbrenner, has moved in the wrong direction since passing the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees earlier this month. The Tech Industry Coalition includes Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Twitter, LinkedIn, AOL, and Dropbox, and was founded after last year's revelations about NSA online surveillance. The group said the latest draft opens up an unacceptable loophole that could enable the bulk collection of internet users' data. While it makes important progress, we cannot support this bill as currently drafted and urge Congress to close this loophole to ensure meaningful reform. The group statement comes on the heels of major privacy advocates walking back their support for the new bill when the newest version, written after negotiations between House leadership and the Obama administration earlier in the week, came out on Tuesday. The Computer and Communication Industry Association, which represents Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and others, also said on Wednesday that they are pulling their support for the USA Freedom Act and criticized the way the bill has changed in the days before its scheduled floor vote. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. From the creation of the Bible in 1912 by a struggling Baltimore book salesman to the day in 1493 when Christopher Columbus and his crew looked back on their voyage and realized what they truly discovered was themselves. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 21st, 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the surface of the moon. The f***ing moon, for Christ's sake. This is Tranquility Base. The Eagle has landed. Jesus H. Christ, Houston. We're on the f***ing moon. Over. Roger, Tranquility. We copy that. We cannot believe you are on the f***ing moon. I'm descending the ladder. Just one more step and I'm holy living. I absolutely am standing on the surface of the f***ing moon. Jesus H. Christ in a chicken basket. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. We're launching in the second hour of the program. If we get a chance tonight, Mark will tell us about the story we teased last night that he had, which was about government agents, the federal government, using money intended for the poor to buy themselves massages, among other things. So we'll get into that story. Your call is certainly welcome here. And actually, Johnson's with us tonight. He opened up the show with uh, an, an artist friend of his we had on. Spires is his name. He uh, did some artwork, some triangular-looking uh, pattern, and that pattern was borrowed, some would say ripped off, by a company called Urban Outfitters. They made a skirt out of it, and the artist says he wishes he could be compensated for that, but odds are good that's never going to happen. When right. I asked the question on our Facebook page, I, I guess I didn't ask a question. I just said here is the uh, the example of what we were talking about on the air. You can actually go to our Facebook page and also Twitter and Google+, Plus, whatever your preference and you can see the actual original artwork, and you can see the skirt uh, that it was turned into without the artist's uh, involvement. A couple other comments from you on our Facebook page. Uh, Shauna Wegenman says, I think it's just rude. Most likely this company doesn't even know they took his design. From listening to them tonight, this isn't a one-time thing this company has done, and giving the artist some compensation is nothing compared to the profit they've received. Not worth lawyer money, though. Lynette Warren says Urban Outfitters probably bought the skirt pattern from a designer who found Spire's design on the internet, replicated it on material, and made the skirt. If Spire's wants compensation, he should seek it from the designer, not Urban Outfitters, who can't be expected to investigate every marking on clothing and other items that they buy. And Johnson, uh, you're here tonight sort of taking the side of artists on this one, while mm -hmm. at the same time saying you don't think the government is the way to solve this problem with people using patterns without asking permission right. first. And Ty is on the line with us in Tennessee via Skype. I uh, wanted to make sure you had a chance to get all your comments out, Ty, so go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to address uh, something Johnson said. I agree, I agree partially with what he's saying, but I think that the big issue here is whether they claim to be the original artists or not. And there's a way without lawyers that you can prove that you're the original creator of, of something. You could have somebody take a photograph of you holding your artwork, put it in an envelope and mail it to a friend or a relative. Sure. And that way it's got a timestamp. And then if you uh, go to a court of law, you can prove that you were, you know, you created it before somebody else. Sure. Now, if this company claimed that they were the original creators of that work, then maybe he would have, you know, some sort of, uh, grounds for a lawsuit, but you would still have to prove some kind of loss, some kind of harm. I think that's really what it comes down to. In, in you know, libertarian legal framework or voluntarist or anarchist framework, you would have to prove that there was some kind of harm done. And if, in the absence of harm, there's no case, no victim, no crime, right? Sure. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And what I find interesting is that, you know, and, and it, it, burns in my head a little bit here is whether or not harm is actually being done because of what I've read and I've read about these other cases where these little artists who are they're selling their own products and then when a big company comes in and what if the big company is selling the exact same kind of product um, that that the artist is selling like let's say Spires he's not but let's say he was selling skirts with that particular design on it and then suddenly urban outfitters comes in and they start selling the same thing and it does affect his sales then what well then then he's got grounds for a lawsuit to claim that he I don't was think the Ian would creator. agree with you i i think that he if he would have to prove though that his sales were actually harmed he would actually have to prove that there was a connection you know what i'm saying that his sales suffered like were, did he have a certain amount of sales and then they started selling some and his went away? What do you, you see think? What I'm saying? I want to well, know what, uh, Ian, I want to know what you think on this because I know that you're so staunchly anti intellectual property. What do you think? If his sales are directly affected by somebody else copying his design, selling the same product, and essentially competing with him in the marketplace by stealing his exact same design and product? Well, again, I don't agree with the idea that it's stealing. I think it's just copying an idea. I mean, as soon as you put something out there, it they should be... They didn't do the work to create that 
idea. Right. So this is one part that's sort of important. What we imagine when we imagine a company that produces uh, textiles, you know, um, you know creates swatches, um, is we, we imagine that they have a process from start to finish, right? Like they've got a person who or people that sit in rooms. They've probably got those standy up tilty desks, you know, that are big, the drafters desks, mm -hmm. and they come up with patterns and cuts of clothing and they come up with all this stuff. They're creative people. There's a lot of coffee and they probably don't have donuts. <laughs> croissants. That's They've got freaking croissants. And uh, these people, are, whatever they are, they're, they're <laughs> hip and I don't even know what the damn name of them is, what they are is they're so hip. Um, the fact is, is these people are coming up with their stuff. They didn't. Somebody went on the internet and just swiped this guy's thing and said, wow, this is awesome. Let's just uh, color copy this. Bam, bam, bam. Get it out. Get it on a skirt. So find, me a, find me a nice butt. Put that skirt on that butt. Let's go. I think it was the sold out. It's crude yeah. and disgusting. I think the very last time we had this discussion about, about intellectual property, one of the major differences between, um, I, I, for example, like just pirating music and uh, pirating music and pirating movies and pirating software and that kind that kind of pirating is that it's personal. It's not like someone's going and selling it. And I think that there's a huge difference between selling and and take you know copying something for personal use. I think there's a massive difference mm -hmm. because in one case you are stealing from the creators in that you are I think affecting their profit margins by taking sales from that person. Another question well, I, for you on that. I, uh, if, uh, let's say, the original creator has died, uh, should yeah. their offspring uh, be given compensation? So should somebody who's running off copies of the Mona Lisa be giving compensation to the descendants of whoever the hell it was that did the this Mona Lisa? This is where I would have gone, Ian. It's the best question. Sure. So if somebody comes up with a skirt that has the Mona Lisa on your fanny rather than this guy's uh, triangles, which are, you know, pretty, um, you know, do do we have to then, um, you know, give money to all of Leonardo da Vinci's yeah, no, uh, I don't uh, think so because I think that the compensation should be relative to the work. Well, the other issue, too, is that this, this uh, closed – company has Labor a greater number of clientele has has more people that it could sell to whereas very few people may have heard of this artist so this may actually be getting his name out if he sure. had have, have a way to prove that he's the original creator it may increase his sales sure absolutely you know and i take advantage sure of it. absolutely and i think urban outfitters it would be good of them to you know cite who they took the work from that and would say be good of them, hey yeah. inspires this is here's a link to his website where we're selling this product that we took from this artist and we're going to you know promote this artist because we appreciate what this artist did and so we're putting it on a product and selling it. i think that's the appropriate thing to do in a circumstance like this but again it may not have been urban outfitters who made the sure. choice on this they probably have vendors that they I buy think product that though from. that they bear responsibility for that i think it's a, a cop out a complete cop uh -huh. out to say I, I work for a fashion industry company it's not that hard for them to look up and figure out a design they when they take their sources they take it from somewhere i think I mean, yes it is possible for a stock image website or some sort of site where they're sourcing from designs from they, I, I there's the ripoffs are... that happen on those sites all the time too so it is possible that that happened well people are concerned about giving creative credit to the originator that's that's why we feel like it's a real creepy thing that they've done. It's because the original creator is not getting the credit. That's that's where it's like uh, fingernails and a chalkboard to us. Sure. So that's something that needs to be addressed too. I'd like to call it. You know, I'd like to just change it and say, you know, it's, I wouldn't call it intellectual property, but I would call it intellectual work and intellectual effort, and therefore that I think that somebody should be compensated for their intellectual effort and their intellectual work. I don't think that it should be treated like property and that it should be handed down via estate. To you know, somebody who didn't do the work, I don't think that it should be transferable in that way. Um, but I do think that when there is a direct effort that has gone into creating something, that someone should be compensated right. for the efforts and the work which they did. It's the creative part that I think you know. I, I think intellectual property, the intellectual part, is a misnomer because it's not always an intellectual thing to Ian, create. If something. I create a design for you and then I give it to you and you say oh, I'm not paying you because I've already got it. Is that theft? Well, we would have had an agreement in advance where I would have, would have agreed to pay you. So, yes, that would be theft if I had reneged on my agreement. We don't write that stuff down, and Johnson sure. has created uh, stuff Many times for us. without any kind of agreement because it's just trust. Well, it's just a normally holery. there's an agreement involved. More coming up here. Thanks, Ty, for the call. This is Free Talk Live. 
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want and dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. We've got a webcam and more, all of it free at freetalklive.com. Dodd, Fre Frank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, 
they're killing the mortgage industry. But the Mortgage Minute guy, Roger Schlesinger, has found some ways around these rules and organizations. Private loan sellers are competing directly against the U.S. government, and uh, things look pretty good. Stated income loans are back. These really were less trouble than the traditional mortgages during the uh, the, the, the housing crisis anyway. So st- uh, state your income, truthfully, obviously, and, and then get a loan. Rates are great, and it's never been easier to get a loan. Um, you need to refinance, whether you need to refinance or, or get cash out, call the Mortgage Minute guy at one 866-288-0088. Or go to mortgageminuteguy.com. 1-866-288-0088. Mortgageminuteguy.com. We continue here. We've got uh, intellectual property on the table. Designers, uh, Urban Outfitters is this store that, you know, it's an American store. There are uh, 25,000 employees or something like that. Who knows how many locations they have. Uh, they are allegedly... Ripping off is the term that Johnson used. Sure. Some would say borrowing. Some would say copying the artists' uh, work of artists around the world and giving no compensation, not even contacting the artists, not even giving them credit on their website. Maybe karma's coming back around to bite Urban Outfitters. Sure. There's news out there as of yesterday at uh, CBS Money Watch that apparently they are taking a beating in the stock market. Uh, they just uh, they haven't hit their groove. To understand Urban Outfitters, or they've they've lost their groove, stark admission that it has lost its fashion sense, you might as well start with the bear coat. The much maligned coat is oversized, fuzzy, and has a fake bear's head on top of the hood, and it costs $200. Not well, quite they, your style? If they knock it down a little bit, I'd be interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I, I just can't do this $200 thing. I, well, I think it's pretty cool, but I can't do this... Uh, you, know, you I, haven't seen it yet. You don't know yeah, what sorry. it Sorry, two hundred dollars. Is it bulletproof? I'm not interested. The much maligned coat is uh, again. It has a fake bear's head on top of the hood. Costs two hundred dollars. How about the hundred eighty nine dollar leather garter belt? A fifty four dollar. What do you do with that? Men's flo- floral jogging pants or the eighty nine dollar wow. floor length kimono jacket. All right, I'm in. It might be apparent why one 30-year-old told Bloomberg that he finds the clothes embarrassing. He said, today, <laughs> I would just look comical if I shopped there. I'd be laughed at. And or he, you might look like you're starring in The Matrix. He said that in 2011. <laughs> three years later, it's clear Urban Outfitters still hasn't found its fashion groove. Uh, the CEO said in an earnings call, there's much work to be done for Urban to regain its fashion footing. They lost 9% of their shares on Tuesday alone. The stock has fallen some 25% in the last year. Yep. So maybe it's coming back. Maybe the negative karma from uh, all them, all their copying has come back to bite them. So we had a little debate on the break that I'd like to rehash a little bit because I think it's a really interesting point about this intellectual property thing. And, and my thought here... <laughs> I oh found the bear coat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's terrible. All right, I'll put a link to it on our uh, Facebook, Google Plus, and Would you Twitter wear that, Mark? For you. I love that. <laughs> oh, wow. Hold that thought, Johnson. Yeah. Let's go to Bill. He's in uh, Mississippi in Jackson. Hey, Bill, you're on Free Talk Live listening to WPBQ. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh the uh, copyright thing is very similar to the, the patent world, and what it amounts to is, if you, if you analyze, uh, especially the, some of the famous cases, uh, it's it's down to the biggest war chest and the highest number of lawyers on staff, and those guys win. Yep. Because there are, are one of the, the most egregious cases is uh, back in the uh, early 1900s when probably the greatest technological genius short of Tesla, and that was uh, Edwin Armstrong, the inventor of, of uh, FM broadcasting, FM modulation, had his own uh, string of, of FM stations uh, down around 47 megahertz. He's definitely a pioneer. Well, along comes David Sarnoff, who needs a modulation scheme for his newly developed television, and he just steals it. And, of course, Armstrong... Uh, you know, he confronts him, and uh, Sarnoff just says, well, sue me. So, and he did. And then, of course, it, it was nothing, you know, awarded. Uh, Armstrong admitted, ended up committing suicide, and his Armstrong family finally prevailed just a few years ago, I think maybe 10 years ago, and they won. But, of course, in the meantime, I mean, RCA and, and uh, NBC and so forth with David Sarnoff just took the, mod- the modulation scheme, and, you know, they, they did what they wanted to with it. Hmm. 
So it's just a matter of who has the most money and who has the most lawyers. It's Those so guys true. Those are going to win from a practical standpoint. Yep, the system is stacked, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, first of all, I'm just against the idea of intellectual property. But even if you're for the idea of intellectual property, you're still, in my opinion, better off just ignoring it and moving on with what it is you do best rather than spending a bunch of time suing people and hiring lawyers and spending money on attorneys. You could be spending all of that time and effort and money bettering yourself, bettering your product, bettering your marketing or whatever it is that you can do rather than, you know, just frittering it away on the legal system. Thanks, Bill, for your call tonight. Do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But I'm sure there's some lawyer out there that would love to take your money. Speaking of which, have you um, ever seen the movie Flash of Genius? No. What is it? Um, Oh, I can't remember the name name of the guy who's in it, but... um, it's a movie. It's a movie about an inventor, the inventor of the electronic windshield wiper. So essentially, all windshield wipers, okay. the windshield wipers that we know today, um, and he had this technology stolen from him by the Ford Motor Company, and he spent his entire life. I mean, we're talking, I think, twenty years fighting them in court to attempt to get his design back from them, or to get you know, you know to get compensation for it because he was working with them. And so this kind of goes to the the point that I um, I had brought up earlier is is what if you you know as a creative person do a design for someone and they don't compensate you for it and you you know you're working for that person to be compensated and then they just don't pay you <laughs> you know and they already have your design is that then theft. Yeah, if you're under an agreement with somebody, and but what if they don't... you just you know you're working with them under you know past sort of expectations and you don't have an agreement because you trust or get into a situation? I mean, obviously it's stupid. I get that it's stupid, you know, to to not have an agreement and to not necessarily work with someone. But maybe you want to just have, um, you want to be flexible. Well, you're you still know, especially proofs. a lot of liberty people, uh, you know, want to be have that kind of flexibility and not have to worry about legal documentation and contracts. Oh, I agree. I whatnot. agree. There's the. I mean, oftentimes if, you'll find um, photographers will show you something something that says like proof across the face, right? Right. Before they even talk to you about pricing. Right. Like they just want to say they want you to look at it and want it, and then we can talk about how much you're going to pay right. for it, right? Mm-hmm. And with a company, however, they can if if the design is important to them, you can say, hey, look, this is sort of similar to what I'm talking about here, or whatever, and uh, you know they can just swipe it. We'll come and back with more here in moments. Uh, you can share your thoughts, your answer for Johnson's question of. You know, what if you don't have an explicit agreement? What if you just have a long time history of working with somebody and then they screw you at the very end? Is that theft? 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. I'd say there's an argument that it is. Uh, if you've created an expectation, I guess. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean, really get their attention? Then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com I'm a very bad man. And today I watched you leave for work. Then I kicked your door and took your stuff. Without a door devil reinforcing your door frame, it was like you invited me. Don't worry, I'll check back in a couple weeks. Once you've got new stuff. (laughs) Door devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit doordevil.com. Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of Pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera, a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at coplock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. 4. 
the winner chosen by contest sponsors will be notified by email and the pivot head sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash pivot head. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free, 855 453. That's 855 450 3733. And you're invited to our website. We've got a lot of features waiting for you there. We've got the mobile site. Uh, for those of you who have a smartphone, you like quick access to the live streams and the podcast, just go to M as in mobile dot freetalklive.com as we continue here we've been talking about intellectual property throughout the bulk of the show tonight but we do have other things in the show prep pile to talk about here including mark's story about the federal agents using donations apparently uh, intended for the poor for massages that's what i understood from what you said last night but i what i don't know is how federal agents got their hands on donations normally they just have money they've stolen from people so i'm wondering about that mark will tell us more about it here in a few moments and uh we are going to continue with your calls and thoughts with uh, liberty phoenix on the line via skype hello phoenix hey guys um i wanted to ask you guys a question in regards to road um who's gonna build the solar roadway you're a little muffled guys, there. I don't know uh, if you're talking directly into your microphone. Is that any better? A little bit. Go ahead. So who's going to build solar roadways was the question? Yeah. Have you guys heard of these? I have not. Have either of I you? I have, heard? yes. Yeah, they've got these hexagonal solar plates that, uh, well, and then half he- hexagons um, that yeah. they then uh, sort of stick together to make roads. And the idea is, is that, um, you know, they're more durable than a regular road, replaceable um, because they're you know what, three square foot hexagons something or something like that. Like that. Yeah, I think so. um, they, that. you could be potentially power the car off the roadway like a trolley. You know, hmm. you know how trolleys work, Ian. Mm-hmm. Nope. Uh, no. Sort of. It uses uh, in, I think it's induction. Called, uh, induction charging. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so they, 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 there's some electricity on some lines or whatever. You don't want to touch that. Um, it's it's like the subway. So any any the animal rail. or human being that touches the road at any section just. Well, I, I think the microprocessors can shut them on and off. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that works or whatever, but, um, you know, so this is the idea. And potentially no more power lines either, because if you've got the the roadway out there 
you know, just being solar energy all the time. It's running power through it. Essentially, the road is the power line. And hmm. so you'd get your electricity from the road rather than getting it from these power lines, which, by the way, it's going to make it's going to cut out a lot of work in the area of, um, you know, linemen. And it helps take care of the bug problems. <laughs> well, and I've got to say, as a rural uh, volunteer firefighter, I'm chasing trees constantly. These things fall over um, on power lines, and they start fires, and they do all kinds of stuff. Power lines are really old technology, and I don't like them much. So just to clarify, this uh, these are solar panels that will be in a road? They are the yeah, road. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a modular paving system of, of little solar panels that can withstand like a, a, a quarter of a million ton semis going over them. They've been... They've been tested to. Uh, it's made out of glass, so they they've had a, they've had traction testing, and they they're able to stop a a, a vehicle going 80 miles an hour within like the required safety time and, and space. Wow! Um, In I tell you, solarroadways.com. Okay, great. Hey, thanks, Phoenix. I'm gonna let you go. That your your connection is not so hot tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, if you know if you got a bad Skype connection, you can always call us back on the phones. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Normally Skype works pretty well. So solar roadways. I honestly don't know anything about these things. Would love to learn more. But what are the odds any government's gonna pick this up? I mean, the, the government likes to do things the old way. The governments like to spend money too, and these That's have true. to be expensive. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. It really comes down to who's got the connections. And um, also, there's some governments out there that tend to be very forward thinking. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Portland is big on bike uh, paths. So there's huge uh, deal about bike, bike lanes over there, whereas the rest of us are still catching up to 10 years ago. Um, yeah, you know, so I mean, I think this is quite possible. This is emergent technology that could take off, but maybe it'll just be driveways. I don't know. Huh. Okay, so story over at singularityhub.com about these things, published actually today, it looks like. Sometimes big ideas come from unexpected places. A proposal to power the entire United States with solar energy without wires or solar farms by using solar cells to pave roads and parking lots certainly is a big idea. It comes from an Idaho couple, Scott and Julie Brusso, and yet it's promising enough to have received funding from the U.S. Federal Highway Administration. The Brousseaus began simply by wanting to create a grid that would make electric vehicles, but quickly began to see other uses for the hexagonal paving squares. Their company, Solar Roadways, will see its FHA contract expire in July, and they're looking for another million dollars in funding on Indiegogo to manufacture the product commercially. Even when roads are congested and parking lots are full, there's still enough exposed pavement to produce energy. In the latest prototype, a tempered glass shell allows light to hit solar panels inside a hexagonal tire-sized panel, but withstands up to 250,000 pounds. The glass protects the panels and, beneath them, a circuit board. Multicolored LED lights allow transportation authorities to display various traffic lines or text. The glass is textured. There you go. Just get Walmart to pay for them, and you run, uh, run the thing over like a marquee. Right. And another thing that they can do also that's pretty, particularly interesting is each individual panel can act as a sensor. So one of the things that I've seen on, on one of the, the roadways website is uh, like if an animal is crossing the road, it's putting pressure on the road in mm -hmm. advance. So, you know, it's detection of an obstacle in advance and can communicate that to a car that like would be- Like a Google driving car or something sure, like that. Sure. Or, or yeah. potentially even a regular car if the car has the, the technology equipped to be able to receive such a signal and, and be notified that, hey, there's an obstacle coming up. Uh, right. Something's avoided. moving across <laughs> the road. It could just, uh, at the very least, just flash um, red where the whatever it is is stepping. You know, a kid, an animal, mm -hmm. a person, whatever. The glass is textured with additional hexagonal bumps that provide more traction than asphalt. They also help the solar panel. Because that was going to be my question: is how well would glass work with it uh, with <laughs> right. tires? Let's make this thing out of porcelain. You know, I don't understand old showers. What in the world are they thinking about? <laughs> you know, taking porcelain, running soapy water across it, and then having people bathe there. It's insane. No wonder this is the place where most people have accidents in the yeah, house. Sure. Uh, so that's interesting. They're they're putting bumps on the glass to actually give it more traction than asphalt. They also help the solar pavers perform their core functions. Uh, these little he hexagons have six sides, and they're angled at a 45-degree angle, so it becomes a prism. Therefore, no matter where the sun is in the sky, it bends that light down on the solar cells. 
And our LEDs are underneath those hexagons, so the LED lights emanate out six different directions, so you can't miss them, said Scott, an electrical engineer. Pretty fascinating sounding technology. I wonder how it would fare during the wintertime in New Hampshire, though. I mean, here you got snow all over the roads. They've uh, got snow tests on the site. It's one of the things that they talk about really? on their solar roadways. As shown off in demonstration parking lot, a trough would run alongside the pavement, housing cables that send back the energy generated by the panels and any data. The empty demonstration lot, located in northern Idaho, manages to pump out 3,600 watts. Alongside the trough for wires is a separate trough that collects stormwater, a major source of water pollution, and purifies it and or transports it to a water treatment facility. This water technology appears to be very much in the idea phase, however. As for charging those EVs, that can be done through wireless induction or through a charging station at the side of the solar road. The Broussaws have seen more and more uses for the solar roadways as they push forward after they're receiving their first funding in 2009. The tiles wouldn't just juice vehicles. They could supply the entire nation with electricity, even though the solar technology in the latest prototype is just 18% effective. These are, after all, 31,000 square, or there are, after all, 31,251 square miles of roads and sidewalks to work with. Is that all? It seems low. The panels would also make transportation authorities' jobs easier in a couple of ways. The LED lights would make repainting a thing of the past. And because the tiles are warm, they stay clear <laughs> of snow and ice. This is no awesome. Ha no having to replace, you know, no having to repaint. No, you're just replacing individual LED bulbs. Well, <laughs> well no, LED LEDs bulbs. don't burn out for a long time. Yeah, I guess I mean, that's true. These things are supposed to last anything. for 100 hours. And you'd probably just pull this thing up and stick a new one down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, now think about the savings. When you're talking about one of those plow trucks, that's a $350,000 vehicle, um, plus a relatively skilled individual to drive it who's got a pension and works for right. a, a municipality um, and, and whatever the salt costs, too. That's a big deal. So fascinating stuff. There's a little bit more uh, info here about it, and we'll share that with you. And also take your calls and thoughts at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. How far away are we from implementation of this technology? Probably a ways off, but it's exciting. It's Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Men who want intimacy and pleasure back in their love life don't ask if, they ask when. So men, spark up your love life, get pleasure and intimacy back, and please your special lady with Epic Nights. Epic Nights is a safe, revolutionary herbal sexual formula for men that combines ancient herbal ingredients and modern science to significantly support stamina, performance, and pleasure. Men, Epic Nights is a proven 100% natural product that works first time, every time, even after consuming alcohol. And you won't hear any of those cliche disclaimers men because epic nights will not give you unwanted side effects but epic nights will allow you to give your partner what they deserve epic nights is guaranteed as one of the most effective male enhancers on the web or will refund your purchase 100 percent buy epic nights at buyepicnights.com spelled b-u-y-e-p-i-c-n-i-g-h-t-s.com or call 1-877-330-1120 877-330-1120 epic nights one pill one epic night as Sao Paulo struggled to dig out after last week's devastating earthquake. I'm just praying. I'm just praying and helping. One group was left with no one to care for them. There is nowhere for these homeless dogs to go. There is no food to give them. There is no clean water. These dogs are going to starve to death. I have to do the humane thing. I have to put these dogs down. 
O'Brady Shaw is the only journalist compassionate enough to do what has to be done. Put down 50 or 60 dogs today. I didn't want to. Let me help you! But their fate would have been much worse if I hadn't done it. It's better this way. O'Brady Shaw goes where other reporters won't and does the jobs other reporters can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Gut Check with O'Brady Shaw. Live from Sao Paulo. Tomorrow night, only on the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Username there is lrn.fm. If you are a business owner, you get a point of sale, a cash register, somewhere where customers come to buy things, and you've been thinking about getting or accepting Bitcoin from your customers because odds are good if you're not taking Bitcoin, you're leaving money on the table. In a lot of cases, businesses that have begun accepting Bitcoin have taken on new business. New customers have come through the door. So if you've been thinking about accepting Bitcoin, Blockchain.com has the solution. they got a brand new merchant app. It is uh, entering into competition in the marketplace where you know the other merchant apps, they've had problems. There have been issues with those other merchant apps. Blockchain.com is on the scene with no terms of service, no identification requirements. You just go to Blockchain.com, you download the app from the Google Play Store, put it on your favorite Android device, your tablet, smartphone, and get started receiving Bitcoins from your customers. It's zero fees with Blockchain.com. I'm looking right now from, uh, I, and I'm not, ha- never have been known how to s- pronounce this website. I'm going to go with Imager.com. Okay. Imger. Imger. I'm, not, I'm not sure what I've we heard call. Both pronunciations before. Yep. And it's uh, May 2013 versus May 2014, and sort of Bitcoin transactions on a globe. You know, in the Western world, doesn't really show the Eastern world too much. And I, I've been looking at these numbers, and we're talking about numbers that are anywhere from uh, ten times to uh, uh, fifty times what um, what they were last year. Oh wow! Transactions are tremendously different um, in Bitcoin, and they're just it's just happening. Uh, Bitcoin prices have been inching upward over the last yeah. couple few days. Uh, they're not inching anymore. It's, it's at 531. What did we say, 500 a little while ago? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It might have been 500 earlier uh, today. I, I know it was below 500 yesterday when I was looking. So. Indeed. So wait, is this the, hold on, just to uh, clarify something here, Mark. You just posted, somebody posted something on our Facebook slash that. Google Plus Twitter. Uh, it says Bitcoin adoption is really happening. But what I'm seeing here is a picture of CoinMap. These are not transactions. These are businesses that accept oh, Bitcoin. Is that, okay, thank you for that, because I, I thought that that's what I was seeing here from CoinMap. So that's uh, businesses that accept them? That's correct. Well, in, in fact, that's even more important than transactions, because uh, businesses that accept Bitcoin is how it's going to make a difference. Because what, what's revolutionary about Bitcoin is the ability to send and receive money for virtually no fee. For a very small, like pennies, uh, you can send bitcoins around the world, and that really, at this point, the pennies are just a tip. So um, you can avoid doing it if you want to do it. And the like, so suppose I send, uh, I don't know, suppose I live here in the United States, but I've got some relatives in Mexico. I want to send them some money because I earn a lot more than they do, and I want to make their life better. Well, I'm looking at Mexico, and uh, I'm seeing, well, at least in the Central America area, there it looks like. T- 
45 businesses that are accepting uh, bitcoins. Now, I don't if that number goes continues to go up and up and upward, pretty soon you don't have to change your bitcoins in for pesos or drachma or whatever the heck you're trading them in for. You can just use them where it goes then from a money transfer system to a currency. And that's the that's the trajectory I see for Bitcoin, and it's quite good as far as uh, owning some of these units. Yep, we'll keep our eyes on it over time here. Uh, so, what? just to come back around to what we were discussing in the last segment, there's a little bit more here from SingularityHub.com. This is about the solar panel brick road uh, that apparently Solar Roadways is the company's name. You can go and check out more about them. SolarRoadways.com, I think it was, Yeah, was their website. Again, the story from Singularity Hub. They, uh, One of my concerns immediately, we're here in New Hampshire, and for a good three months out of the year, Roads can be a little snowy here in uh, in New Hampshire. Now you know they'll so they'll salt them down, they'll clear them off. Uh, but I don't know if salt is salt okay with glass. I mean, how is that going to work? They're right. also saying here though in the story that you don't even need to clear the roads because the tiles are warm. They will stay clear of snow and ice on their own. Which That's going to have to be seriously warm in negative twenty degree. Weather. You would think so. It right? doesn't snow in negative twenty degree weather. Um, it snows a brown. It doesn't? No. It doesn't. Um, around down to ten or so. After that, it's just you know, it's just like the freaking tundra. It doesn't uh, snow anymore. You're just talking about little bits of uh, ice that blow around and get in your eye. Um, so what you really the, the snow snow is generally not that warm. I don't think it's a problem at all. I think it'll take care of it. Relatively uh, it says quickly. here they actually did an, an entire winter long test in northern Idaho, and I imagine it gets pretty cold there in northern Idaho. Uh, so I, I would love to have more about the winter test just because I'm curious about it. Mm -hmm. That really all we get is the one sentence here saying, well, they did a whole winter long test and everything was fine. <laughs> one would assume that it was that was good. I mean, I, yeah. yes, Idaho gets plenty cold there. Um, they, they can provide all the cold you need in Idaho. So, yeah, the, I think that's fine. The circuit boards offer the biggest benefits. The pavers can communicate directly with road crews and potentially drivers. Again, for you, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about these uh, hexagonal road pieces that are made of glass. And below that, they have LEDs and circuitry, and they're essentially so solar panels all connected together, meaning that uh, the roads and parking lots that could be made from these things could actually power apparently a whole lot of stuff uh, and certainly could pay for the roads the pay you know the roads could pay for themselves the circuit boards can communicate with the road crews and drivers the tiles check in with transportation officials as part of their normal operation so if one stops responding road crews can be notified immediately and provided with the exact location of the trouble spot the tiles are also equipped to communicate with vehicles, folding in nicely with the government's plans to link roads and vehicles together with internet communications. Another thing that we deal with up here in uh, the, in New England are what are called frost heaves. And for a while, you know, I was driving around New Hampshire, and they had these road signs that say frost heaves. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> apparently, it's the name of a band. <laughs> apparently, it's when the you know the different temperatures, the road kind of moves a little bit well, as it freezes. The and different temperatures. It's so cold that the water deep within the ground expands so much. <laughs> it drives the road up. It drives the road up like a foot, two feet sometimes, you know. And it creates some very uneven road right. surfaces, and it can be a huge pain. It essentially means that the roads here go to junk after, what, a couple years? It I mean, really doesn't do take last? long. It's amazing. Well, it depends on how bad the winter is. Like, we had a oh, I see. brutal, bitter, cold winter this past winter, which is why the roads all look like garbage right so now. So then this wouldn't pre pre uh, prevent frost heaves, then. I thought the frost heaves had more to do with the kind of road uh, that was layered over the, the ground. You're well, saying as long as I the ground is know. moving. I don't know, because if they're warm, right, and they're constantly applying heat i mean are they preventing the ground beneath them from getting cold that's a good point yeah. that may very well that may very well be the case johnson i think that you might be right and this is the thing about road technology is because the biggest argument for the state and by the state i mean uh, an organization that claims for itself a monopoly pr privilege on you know whatever it wants in a given geographic area so for instance putting down roads. Without the government, who would build the roads? I mean, we've heard this over and over again to the point it's a joke with amongst uh, liberty-oriented folks. Um, we don't know who would build the roads, and we don't know how much better the roads would be. Here's what we do know. We know monopolies provide terrible customer service. Yeah. 
We know that monopolies tend to not respond to public demand, and they tend, no innovation. tend to be awful when it comes into the area of innovation. So, yes, there are private companies that build the roads at the behest of municipalities, but the municipalities are the ones that are paying, and because mm-hmm. they're paying, they still have the perverse incentives. Well, right, and if those private companies are used to getting sweet deals from the government, then this new technology comes along that, let's just say, it solves the problem of frost thieves. I don't know if it does, yeah, maybe but let's it does. just say it does. Let's just say you can use this stuff during the winter time. you don't have to clear the roads. Well, there you go. You've now put all of the people who uh, you know, have been building these roads for years, they know they've got this deal where they're going to have to come back every two years to repave every single road surface across all of you know, the winter states. Uh, that's big money for those companies. They're not going to want to adopt this new technology. They're going to want to keep things the status quo. We like things the way they are. Yeah, sure, it's inconvenient for drivers, but it's good money for the road builders. Why would they want to take on a new technology where they install these things once and then maybe every now and then have to come out and replace a malfunctioning panel? That, for a lot yeah, of these point. old school, old old way business companies, is not going to be attractive. Now, how would that change? Well, you'd have to have a government being willing to try something new rather than just keep scratching the backs of the good old boys. And that's not very likely either. I don't want to say that, I don't want to sound like I'm shooting this idea down. I would really love to see this come to fruition. Well, this is interesting because what we have here is social media pressure on on organizations, municipalities that and you know governments above that size that aren't used to this kind of pressure. Well, um, and the fact is is that if this had occurred 10, 15 or 20 years ago, we would have never heard anything about it. That's a good but point. Ian, these roads can also be the power delivery system. So, you know, they could just constantly tax people on the the delivery of the energy, which is also going to power their cars. So they don't need a gas tax tax anymore because the people are actually getting their fuel from the roads because they're getting their power from the roads. So, you know, why not, you know, tax and charge them on that? The government might might do that, too. Very well might. (laughs) So anyway, fascinating stuff. I'll put a link up to the story on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can take a look at it at your leisure. And we'll continue here with our number three coming up. Government agents apparently taking money intended for the poor, spending it on massages and other things. Mark will tell us about it on the way. Free Talk Live. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Will that happen in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work? Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. Gold opened today, $1,302. Silver opened at $19.70, and Bitcoin is trading at $519.06. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from growyourowngroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at growyourowngroceries.org. Org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or give them a call 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, a move in the wrong direction. That's what the Reform Government Surveillance Coalition, comprised of top tech firms such as Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, are calling a bill touted as a reform of NSA spying. According to Russia Today, the so-called USA Freedom Act would remove the mass storage of phone records from the United States government. Instead, it would require telecommunications companies to store the data. The NSA would then need FISA approval to search the information. The coalition Wednesday issued a statement one day ahead of the House vote on the bill. They say the bill to be voted on is not the same as the one that passed the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees earlier this month. The opposition is focused on the broad definition for how and when government officials can search the stored phone records. The European Commission has announced new charges against U.S. Bank J.P. Morgan, Europe's HSBC, and France's Credit Agricole related to financial rigging. The commission says they're concerned the three banks may have been involved in a scheme to distort prices of euro interest rate derivatives. J.P. Morgan and HSBC deny any wrongdoing. Over 100 arrests made Wednesday as nearly 2,000 protesters demanded increased wages and the right to unionize for McDonald's employees. The protest happened near the fast food giant's Oak Brook, Illinois headquarters, timed with the company's shareholders meeting. According to Business Week, the 125 arrested on trespassing charges included McDonald's employees, members of clergy, and labor leaders. The protest was the latest in a series of demonstrations across the nation as the employees pressed for an hourly wage of $15 and a union. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. A stay of execution for Missouri inmate Russell Bucklew. Condemned to die Wednesday evening, the United States Supreme Court intervened, sending the case back to the U.S. 8th Circuit Court of Appeals. The Los Angeles Times reports that Bucklew's attorneys argued that state officials failed to demonstrate they could humanely perform the execution, based in part on Bucklew's health. They also questioned why Missouri officials refused to disclose information about lethal injection procedures. The 45-year-old Bucklew would have been the first inmate put to death since the botched Oklahoma execution of Clayton Lockett that drew outrage across the nation. Bucklew was convicted on charges of murder and rape in connection with a 1996 Missouri rampage. On Monday, the New Mexico Court of Appeals ruled in favor of a disabled employee, ordering the worker's employer, an automotive repair shop, to reimburse him for medical marijuana expenses. While the automotive shop appealed the decision, arguing they would be in violation of federal law if they paid for the worker's medical cannabis, a judge upheld the ruling. The worker was injured on the job and suffered from 99% permanent partial disability. This could go on to be a groundbreaking decision. Read more about this story on our website at thelibertybeat.com. And support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show. Catch them live each Friday night, 9 o'clock Central Time, at coreymoreshow.com. Support for the Liberty Beat also comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, Inc., Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online, rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile.
It's the video sensation that's taking the internet by storm. A web series on YouTube passed the 100 views mark this week. Titled Andrew and John, the wildly popular webisodes feature roommates Andrew Vanier and John Haney playing fictionalized versions of themselves in unusual situations, mostly set in and around their Chicago apartment. Dude, did you get my tart? What's a tart? Oh, you just texted me a fart. Their latest short titled Laundry Day reached the unprecedented 100 view milestone this week after a heavy promotional push in which the duo posted the skits to their Facebook pages. The hit video features the roommates wearing unconventional outfits while scrounging up enough change to do laundry in their basement. Other popular episodes include Foreign Landlord featuring John's friend Brett from work and a video where Andrew suspects John might be a zombie. Our videos consistently get over 50 views now, but Laundry Day, that's the first mm -hmm. one that's really taken off. Yeah, everyone I know has seen it. It's completely viral. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to make your call to us about whatever happens to be on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username here is lrn.fm. Coming up, Boston taxi drivers are really upset. They are going to protest the existence of a new competitor. Actually, they're not that new, but newish compared to the rest of the taxi industry. Uber and uh, the other ride-sharing services that are really revolutionizing, uh, revolutionizing the taxi business and the driving people places businesses. Because I think the Uber drivers would say they're not taxis. They're just people willing to give somebody a ride somewhere. And in a somewhat organized manner. We'll uh, talk more about that. Plus, Mark, you've got a story to start out the hour here that we teased all last night. We never got to it. So let's jump into that, shall we? From WashingtonExaminer.com, feds use donations intended for poor for massages and luxuries for themselves. Mm. Federal employees and a contractor uh, diverted more than $1 million <laughs> of charitable contributions. Are you saying that with like a pinky to the side $1 of your million <laughs> dollars in, uh, on themselves for in-office massages, meals at every meeting, and other luxu luxuries and unnecessary expenses a uh, government audit found. Hmm. They called themselves volunteers and said that they needed motivation to help them um, yeah. help the less fortunate even though some 41 federal workers were being paid full-time salaries to administer just one local chapter of the government's annual workplace charity drive the combined federal campaign this is <laughs> one local chapter of the government's annual workplace charity drive if we don't have motivation, this might have a sad ending. <laughs> we don't want it to have a sad ending. Do they you know a, what we mean? And they had a happy ending, <laughs> I can assure you. Uh, they arrived a day early and stayed a day late for annual training conferences in New Orleans and Las Vegas and paid for room service and pay-per-view movies with mm. donated funds. Then they adamantly defended their right to do so when questioned by auditors. They claimed that restrictions on spending for things like First-class flights didn't apply to donated funds because taxpayer money was not involved. Uh, <laughs> now, what's the program called again? The federal what donation? The Combined Federal Campaign. The, I don't know what that is. What, but wasn't there like a, an actual name for the campaign? That is it. Okay. It's, it's in capital letters. Gotcha. Capital C, Combined, Capital F, Federal, Capital right. C, compa Campaign. And so these people raise money... From donations. Yeah, if you Google CFC, it's the first thing that comes up. Gotcha. Yes. Um, it's dead now, by the way, I would imagine. <laughs> this, is, this is the nail in the coffin, let's hope. The whole thing they were working on, uh, the whole time they were working on the CFC full-time, these uh, loaned executives received full government salaries and were able to ignore the work they were originally hired uh, in their agencies to do. So they're doing this fundraising stuff full time, getting all the perks and bennies and their paychecks on top of it. The CFC is overseen by the Office of Personnel Management through uh, regional committees made up by federal employees. Each of the committees contract with an outside nonprofit group and do most um, to do most of the work. 
paying expenses out of the donations. So the committees contract with outside nonprofit groups to do most of the work. So they're not doing anything? No. They're bureaucrats being bureaucrats, getting massages, free meals, Partying. room service, <laughs> and uh, you know extra vacation days in Vegas and New Orleans. The website, the website here at uh, opm.gov uh, slash combined federal campaign or whatever, it's uh, CFC, the CFC, um, it... it they have this, uh, you know, this Keith and Angie, and they're smiling, and they've got a slogan. It says, 50 years of making a difference. We give because we can." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, going on here, it says, "Global Impact occupies custom built." This is uh, one of these organizations, I guess, that uh, that, that deal with occupies. Uh, um, custom built office space with wall to wall views of the Potomac River. On these walls are pictures of starving children in Africa juxtaposed with elaborate conference rooms and amenities wow. like a gourmet kitchen. Global Impact has assets of more than 20 million, according to its latest tax return. The same nonprofit also has the contract uh, for another large CFC campaign, which covers members of the U.S. military on overseas deployments. In 2012, a, a, the year a scathing audit by OPM's uh, Inspector General of uh, Global Impact's work in the D.C. area con uh, contract was published. The nonprofit paid its uh, then top executive, Renee Acosta, nearly a half a million dollars. I don't think that, that that's incredible for top executives. Not that I'm saying that uh, people find that acceptable. I'm just saying not terribly surprising. Um, I'm just, you know, stunned by the, um, uh, you know, all the kind of things that uh, go on here. Apparently, this uh, contract. So, just to clarify, these people take money from federal employees. It's the federal employees that are donating. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, according to, to the some extent, combined federal campaign. But they've got families too that work in the private marketplace. Page on uh, Wikipedia. It's a program allowing certain nonprofit organizations to solicit contributions from employees of the federal government of the United States. According to their website, the mission of the CFC is to, quote, promote and support philanthropy through a program that is employee-focused, cost-efficient, and effective in providing all federal employees the opportunity to improve the quality of life for all. And then it goes on to give you some idea of how much money they have collected. In 1964, it was $12.9 million. In 79, it was $82 million. It peaked in 2009 at 282 million, and in uh, 20, 2011, probably the most recent year with statistics, they pledged uh, the federal employees gave 272 million dollars to this CFC. So essentially, these are bureaucrats taking money from other bureaucrats and then spending it on massages and vacation days and other perks. Yeah, I'm really surprised that uh, I mean, <laughs> these people just. Keep it up, I guess. It's uh, it's amazing. I, I can't... Well, you're saying you think the program's going to go away, but you have no evidence. You're totally speculating Speculating, on that. sure. Would you give to it? Well, I'm After not... After this? I, I'm not qualified, but no, I wouldn't give to it. Certainly not. Oh, I think you're qualified. I'm sure you can send some money into it. Okay, maybe. But, um, yeah, I don't think that, uh, I think people are going to have a difficult time giving to it after this. Um, this is, the word's going to get around on this one pretty quickly. They're they're directly in bed with these. So both the not for profits that they work with and the liaisons that they um, that that the federal government uh, agencies put to, put in place to work with these not for profits. They're both crooked. Hmm. They're both messed up. Surprise! And nobody, people don't like giving to charities where all of it goes to. Uh, you know, internal stuff, let alone when that internal stuff's a bunch of luxuries. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And that's one of the things that people should look at before they decide to give to a charity is, you know, how are these people handling the money that they're being given? Some some charities, with quotes around it, are notoriously bad for, uh, for not doing anything actually charitable with the money and just spending it all on overhead. Wasn't it Bono uh, from U2? I who, think it's Bono. Bono. Wasn't it? Uh, wasn't he the guy? The one campaign. Yeah, his campaign like spent like 1% of the money they got in on actually helping people right. or like 5% or something very, very piddly and 95% or something like that went to overhead for the organization. Well, well then clearly the combined federal campaign is choosy with the slogan of we give because we can. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you know, I can do a lot of things.
But well, their employees certainly are in a better position to give than the average person because a government, sure. federal government bureaucrat makes way more money on average uh, than true. does a regular person. But if you make way more money, you're still not going to give to this organization because you're going to want to. Um, you still want your money to wherever you give. You want your money to go as far as possible. Yeah. Was there more highlights from the story, Mark? Well, I can read a little bit more about what the um, the not for profits are doing with the the money. This global impact is they've done a study on that. But um, I think the most interesting stuff has uh, already been covered as far as the massages and the uh, meals and the the vacations and all that stuff. You can share your thoughts, especially if you have uh, any experience with bad charities. And it doesn't have to be this one; it can be anything. There's all kinds of examples out there of malfeasance and uh, misbehavior on parts of people that are supposedly trying to help folks. So this global impact was um, apparently they were reimbursed for unreasonable, unallowable, or unsupported expenses consisting of things like uh, uh, t- uh, including expensing personal dry cleaning bills, gift shop purchases, travel to awards bank of some related to the CFC, and an $80 flower gift to an employee. Still to come here tonight, Uber. They're out there trying to provide people with ride-sharing services, and the taxi cab drivers are upset. We'll explain. Coming up. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like your choice of two guitar stands or wall hooks for 10 bucks, or two pairs of Vader drumsticks for 5 bucks, or three sets of Ernie Ball electric guitar strings for 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. 
He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm. That is a great way to get in touch with Free Talk Live. You know what? Online privacy is important, and it takes a little bit of effort to ensure that you have it. One of the things you can do is go and get ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL is how you go and download the software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices as well. It is a virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that your internet service provider, who right now is probably logging every website you visit and every search term you enter, they will no longer know what you're doing if you use ProXPN because it's you're, now your data is encrypted and your ISP's job at that point is to just pass the data and move it along to where it's going, which is ultimately to the ProXPN server that then goes out to the rest of the internet from there. So it's a great way to protect your privacy, and you can do it all for 5 bucks a month with our discount code. You need this code when you sign up for their uh, Platinum, not Platinum, their Premium Package. FTL20 is the code. That 20 stands for 20% off for the lifetime of your account with ProXPN. Again, go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. With that Platinum, uh, I keep saying Platinum, and there's a reason why, <laughs> and I'll tell you that in a moment here, but uh, the, with the premium account at ProXPN, there's only the one premium account. There's no Platinum account there. With the premium account, you get uh, different servers around the world to which you can connect. You get unlimited bandwidth. There are, uh, again, those different servers allow you to, for instance, connect to the Netherlands server where it's not subject to United States law. That can be a great thing, especially if you're doing private torrenting, which is something else that the, pre uh, the premium account at ProXPN allows you to do. So, uh, plus, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online surfing habits. You get that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and you can get the deal with our discount code at FTL. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. The code is FTL20, and that breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month when you buy the annual plan with that discount code. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code is FTL20. Now, why was I? Why did I keep saying platinum over and over and over again there? Well, we'll tell you about that here in just a <laughs> moment. Stay tuned for some special details that I think people are going to be pretty excited about. I know I am, but we'll get to that here in a moment. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, our Pro our, uh, Pro XPN toll-free line. We've also got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. As we continue here, uh, the story out of Boston. The union representing Boston taxi drivers is organizing a protest against the popular ride-sharing service Uber. And the protest was supposed to go on, well, it says here they're organizing it today, so I'm not sure when it's actually going to happen. It will, uh, yeah, supposedly it was today. The Boston Taxi Drivers Association demonstrated outside of uh, Uber's Boston offices, or they intended to, the protest, uh, to protest the company's presence in Boston. The union said in a statement that Uber vehicles pose a threat to the public because they are unregistered and unlicensed. You can't park your cars here. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, these unlicensed Uber for hire vehicles and drivers operate on the streets of Boston. It puts at risk residents, tourists, and business passengers who assume that these drivers and vehicles are safe and that the rates are fair, said the union in a statement. The union argued that Uber's fair pricing structure, as well as its reliance on black cars, is an unfair business practice that hurts cab drivers. Quote, the it may very well hurt cab drivers. I don't know why that matters. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think we should uh, put all the light bulb manufacturers out of business to save the candlestick makers. Quote, the unlicensed workforce of Uber has cut legitimate taxi business by 30 percent. Without a level playing field, Boston taxis will be driven out of existence, leaving the industry in a state of chaos. 
and the public <laughs> in danger. Drive them out of business. Bye well, bye. Having uh, driven a cab and therefore working at a cab company for a period of time. Did you have to join a union? No, there was no union where in Sarasota where I drove cab. But um, I didn't see people that I thought were necessarily the safest drivers out there. Yeah. Um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. As cabbie, other cabbies, you mean? Yeah, yeah I didn't. I mean, I. <laughs> the, the most unsafe I've ever felt in my life is in cabs. You're right. I, I think that. <laughs> Um, well, I, I felt unsafe in the cabs too, but in many time, many cases, you know, these vehicles were a little rickety. Yeah. Um, but it was mostly the rides that I had to give at certain times of day. I just stopped doing it. I'm, I'm like, look, you can send me out to Longboat Key during the day to give the old ladies rides to the airports. I'm cool with that, and I'm good at it. But I'm not doing your stuff at night. Just mm. not. My, doing it. my experiences comes down to you know the line. Ah, oh, hello, my friend. Are we going to the airport? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we. Oh, one moment, please. Hello. You know, it's just like, and then they're on their phone while driving, and it doesn't matter. You know, mm. it's just ah, and then they're driving at like you know, <laughs> twenty five miles over the speed limit and dodging in between cars with like inches to spare. And it's like, ha. Ah. <laughs> I understand you're an experienced driver, but uh, yeah. So they're upset, man. I mean, they are uh, taking a hit here. Their taxi business is down thirty percent. They claim because of Uber. The union wants Boston Mayor Martin Walsh and Police Commissioner William Evans to ban Uber drivers from the streets of Boston until they are brought under the same regulatory scheme as cab drivers. Quote, people should feel safe when they're traveling in Boston. We cannot turn a blind eye to public safety concerns around unregulated it's, modes of transportation. It's the five monkeys experiment. What is that? Oh, there's a the fantastic uh, YouTube video where it talks about... Um, essentially, you put five monkeys in a cage, and uh, and, each, and you hang a banana, a, a, like a ladder. You have like a, a, a staircase. Yeah, a banana at the top of a ladder. And a banana at the top of a ladder or a staircase. And, and when a, the monkey goes to get the banana- Any of the five monkeys. Any of the five monkeys, you spray it with water. Spray yeah. all the monkeys in the-, yeah, in the all of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, I thought it started with the first one. You just spray the first one, and then you spray all of them. As I understand it, it, you spray them all, and then individually you uh, pull monkeys out of the cage. Right. And then at, at some point, they begin attacking any monkey who goes up the stairs. Right, because any, you know, any, if they're spraying all the monkeys, every time one of the, one of the monkeys goes to try and get the banana, then eventually the monkeys are going to be like, okay, this is ridiculous. Stop trying to get the banana. And they start attacking mm -hmm. the one monkey that's trying to do the smart thing and get the food. But as they pull one monkey out at a time, then the monkeys, the new monkeys that go in and, and to replace the old monkeys will continue to attack the monkey that tries to, any any monkey that tries to go get the banana and for no And not even good understand reason. why. They don't even know why they're doing it. Hmm. And that's essentially what's going on with these cab drivers. It's, we want you to follow the same rules that we have to follow. We don't know why you have to follow those rules. It doesn't even make sense. But just do it because that's the way it's done. No, they don't want that, though, Johnson. What they want is they want this protectionism. They know that there's a certain amount of medallions out there. Right. And the just, medallions cost a million dollars. Well, it, it, we don't know do what they cost in Boston, but they are yeah. pretty expensive in New York. Yeah. Uh, and the intention is just to keep people out of the marketplace. And obviously, if um, you know if people are willing to pay for these Uber cars, then then there's room in the marketplace for competition. Continuing on here, uh, so quote this again from the mayor. Actually, this is uh, Boston Mayor Martin J. Walsh saying. We also cannot condemn a popular, effective service that takes responsible steps to ensure the safety of their users. There is a balance. Uh, city Hall Press Secretary Kate Norton is said in a statement to MassLive.com, the city is committed to hearing all sides on the issue of Uber's operations and its relationship with the taxi cab industry. Said in an email, quote, the mayor continues to recognize that Uber is a popular mode of transportation, but that there are serious issues around regulation and questions around public safety. We'll continue here with Uber's side of the story. 855 450 free, and you can take control on Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. 
Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. We're talking about Uber again and Lyft and the other ride-sharing services. The uh, uh, Boston cab drivers are pissed. They are protesting the existence of these competitors because, well, the competitors are, by all indicators, eating their lunch. They can get into business without having to get one of these taxi cab medallions and start giving people rides places. That automatically puts you at an advantage over these cab drivers. And, of course, rather than protesting the medallion and the cost thereof, sure, they're, sure. they're going after you know, <laughs> their competition. Exactly. We'll continue uh, the story here and take your calls and thoughts. Also, want to let you know how to get a free pound of delicious, best of the best BuzzBox coffee. Yeah, BuzzBox coffee is awesome, awesome coffee. Uh, you're really not going to taste coffee better than this. I love it. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown, 100% organic. Top 1% grade Arabica beans. And since coffee is such an absorbent crop, I think uh, second only to tobacco, it makes that organic certification that much more important. You don't know what country's rules are as far as uh, pesticides like DDT or uh, even leaded gas, that kind of thing. 
that's why I care about organic the organic certification on coffee. Buzzbox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, and it certainly is a high-end, uh, awesome coffee. What they do differently, however, is they allow partners like Free Talk Live to give micro loans to uh, to people around the world. So, for every ten people who order their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, you get the first pound free there. But if you uh, continue on with the subscription. You'll, uh, you'll keep getting your coffee delivered right to your door, and you'll be helping us to help people around the world. Get a microloan. Get a hand up out of poverty. Get a, a sewing machine or a bicycle or a car, whatever it is that they need to do their business. Farming equipment. You just don't know what it is they need. They know what they need. So sending people over to some kind of charity thing, you're not supplying the need they have. Once they buy in and they get a loan for the thing they need, they can work themselves up out of poverty. And I want to help them do it. So please help us to help them. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go to the phones here. We'll continue. We'll get the statement from Uber about what's happening there in Boston. The cabbies are protesting Uber. They're demanding that Uber be brought under the cab regulations. Let's go first to Patrick. He is in Florida and on via Skype. Hello, Patrick. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Hey, I, uh, I saw this story on Reddit, and I, uh, I clicked through the comment section, and I went actually to the – was a Boston uh, – bostonmagazine.com had the story. And I'm reading the comments, and the comments are like, I live in Boston, and these Boston cab drivers will say their credit card machine's broken so they can get cash. And that's, that's the big reason people use Uber. And then someone says, well, Uber is more expensive. And then they're like, well, does that matter then? Because if they're more expensive – Take the cab, you know, take the regular taxi. Is that really true? Because that's not what I've heard from the people who've used Uber and the people who uh, we've got uh, George, who's used to work for the TSA, he's now working for Uber. Mm -hmm. He's saying that he's able to to save people money. At least that's what I recall from the conversations. I mean, does anybody else remember talking to Uber folks? I, I feel like they're supposedly cheaper than the, the well, cab rides. That sounds right to me. It feels like people from the cab industry are posting on these comments saying, well, Uber's more expensive, and then people oh. were like, "Well, what's more expensive? Then why are you worried? Who cares?" You know? Right. So, have you ever ridden in an Uber cab? I have not. I'm. I'm I don't. They don't have them where I live, but uh, everything I've heard about them, they're like pretty awesome because you know it's all GPS based. So you just say, right. "I want to ride," and it says it'll be there in three minutes, or right. whatever. Right. Somebody and it comes shows get up. you. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I've heard nothing but awesome things about it as well, which is why I was disappointed when we went to Austin uh, that we couldn't take an Uber because we actually needed a ride somewhere, and uh, we ended up having to rent a car, whereas we were willing to take an Uber, but uh, Austin City is in Texas trying to prevent that from happening. Well, um, the medallions in Boston, are what? how much are they, Johnson? In Boston, the price of a medallion is $625,000. That's crazy. Pica. That's per car? <laughs> Pica. Pica. How can you make money on that? you got to work hard to get that kind of money. No <laughs> kidding. So, I mean, yeah, that $600,000 is in overhead um, in that cab, and, uh, you know, you've got people that own the car and own the medallion. These taxi cab drivers, why don't they just get a car and start <laughs> Uh, giving people rides. Why Why give all their money to the taxi cab companies and the government of the city of Boston? Patrick, anything else you want to share tonight? No, that's it, man. Thanks, Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Uh, he can You can be like Patrick and get on our Skype here. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Producer uh, SciFace says that uh, in his, his experience, Uber is cheaper in San Francisco, at least. He says he knows a few Uber drivers, including his own brother and good friend. So... Yeah, everything I've ever heard about Uber is that the, the cars are nice, they work, and they work cheap. So no wonder the Boston cabbies are upset. And it's not just happening in Boston. There but are this is the cab union, so you're not exactly sure who you're dealing with here. Whether okay. it's in fact all cabbies. Because I I'll bet you Uber the, the cab companies have lost a lot of drivers to Uber. I bet that's true as well. And they've lost a lot of business. According to the story here at MassLive.com. Uh, their business is down 30%, so that's one of the reasons why they're so upset. Uber was more direct in its response to the taxi cab union saying, quote, uh, this is one of their execs in an email saying, rich taxi medallion owners should spend their time improving customer service, serving undeserved, underserved rather, communities, and investing in new, safe, and reliable vehicles rather than complaining about what Bostonians already know. Uber is the safest, most affordable, and reliable ride in Boston, and Bostonians rely on Uber to get around the city, said Natalia 
Montalvo of Uber. They've encountered a wide range of responses since their arrival in cities across the United States. Some, like Boston, have been more receptive at the outset. Others, like Chicago, have attempted to throw up regulatory hurdles to block the popular ride-sharing service. One of New York's top taxi regulators recently left his position in city government to go work for Uber. Services like Uber and Lyft hired him away. LYFT upset cab drivers because they challenged the longtime status quo that has devolved into a cartel that limits innovation and entry into the marketplace, according to Mark Scribner, transportation scholar at the Libertarian Competitive Enterprise Institute. Quote, if the city decides to restrict competition by unduly burdening the national ride-sharing industry, as the Boston Taxi Drivers Association appears to be advocating, it will almost certainly earn a challenge from the Federal Trade Commission for engaging in anti-competitive conduct, stated Scribner in an email to Mass Live. Continuing his quote, any pandering from city officials deserves nothing but contempt from Bostonians, in addition to potential antitrust investigations, both civil and criminal. We can only hope Boston's leaders will put consumers' interests ahead head of powerful cartels and cronyism. Well, I hope so too, but I wouldn't get my hopes up on that well, one. CEI's pretty pretty much got their ear to this stuff. I read their update uh, every day that comes out. I've had mm-hmm. Mark Scribner on the show, so if that was it's if that's what their assessment is, they're often correct on this stuff. Um I mean, you know, you're you're being skeptical and pessimistic based out of sort of personality as opposed no, to No, it's not based on personality. I mean, th- th- there's a reason why the cab business is so entrenched. They are entrenched because they're good old boys with the people in government. I mean, they are protected. Local government. Right, Boston. Uh, they are protected by these I don't bureaucrats. know if you're aware of this, but the Federal Trade Commission is federal. It's mm-hmm. not local. And, yeah, there's some backscratching that goes on from municipal to, to federal. But to some extent, you know, these when we say that the state is um, an organization that claims a monopoly privilege on the use of force in a given landmass, it's true and it's not. Government agencies tend to not work well together. Um, they just don't get along um, in a lot of cases. So I, I, I'm I'm prone to believe what uh, CEI says in this. Yeah, but all they're going to do, I mean, if if the Federal Trade Commission files some sort of complaint against the Boston cab regulation group or, you know, bureaucracy, they're just going to claim they want to need a level playing field like the 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 union is saying here. Hey, this isn't fair. All of these cabbies have to pay $625,000 to do business and they have to be subject to all these regulations. Shouldn't the Uber cabs, uh, the Uber cars also be subject? Otherwise, it's not fair to the cab drivers. Most of the regulations have to do with the medallion, just oh, having the medallion. I guarantee they won't sell it that way. I guarantee you. Why are the taxis? You have to ask yourself, why are the taxis regulated? Well, it's for people's safety. For safety. So we need the safety. It's, uh, these Uber cars are unsafe. Even right. the children. That's the children. They're but the- So they're going to say, this isn't unfair. <laughs> this is what we're proposing, is that everybody be subject to the same rules. But That's the, fair. Look, it, with the new communication of the internet, you're not going to be able to hold up some crappy but ugly taxi cab and say, look, this is so much safer than this person's new 2014 <laughs> car they've got here. I mean, it's, it is patently ridiculous. It's true. 855 450 free. I guess uh, I don't have the optimism on this one that you do, Mark. Uh, the toll free number is uh, 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on ride sharing and protecting the old ways. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. You've been lied to, lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. 
Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income. Get potential 12 to 17% returns and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Even in these remaining moments, there might be enough time for you and your thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We are talking about Uber and Lyft, the uh, the ride-sharing services that so many have found so useful. I am uh, I wish I could have tried it. I wasn't able to in Austin because Austin's one of the cities where they are prohibiting Uber from operating, from doing business, because they're trying to protect the cab industry. Mark, uh, you were saying you believe that the uh, the Uber operators in Boston will be okay. You think that the city's going to back down, that they're not going to go after Uber in this case, because the cab union, uh, the cabbie union is protesting now. They're upset. They've lost 30% of the business and ta- cab business to the Uber company, uh, to the in- independent drivers who basically, you know, they're not working for a cab company and they're not even working for Uber. They're essentially independent contractors, so they don't have to follow the same rules as the cab companies. They don't have to get the six hundred twenty-five thousand uh, dollar medallion, which legalizes the giving of rides as a cabbie, and they don't have to jump through the the same regulatory hoops. So the well, cabbies are are livid. Uh, yeah, they're livid, and that's well. The, you keep on saying the cabbies. I don't know the how cabbies in the, the union. Cabbies. I don't know how livid the cabbies are as much as the union and the owners of the medallions. Those are the people that should be livid. Um, well, whoever it is that's in the union, there's, they're going out and protesting. Some people are going out and protesting. A lot of times these grassroots protests are nothing but astroturf. So don't just assume that because they've got a few warm bodies out there to protest that, in fact, there's uh, this is how most cabbies even feel in Boston. I couldn't say that. But the Competitive Enterprise Institute here had an assessment that the— uh, 
that they felt that the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, was going to have a problem with, uh, you know, what they would c- consider anti-competitive practices among um, cab unions in this circumstance, and that um, they they felt like it was going to be okay. These people, a lot more informed than I or you, on has this the kind FTC of come to the aid of Uber in the cities where they've been prohibited? It doesn't I, look like it. I don't think so. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I mean, have the, had the lawsuits been brought? I have no idea. No, nor do I. My I know friend. that Uber is likely, uh, you know, working very diligently to attempt to get the regulations changed in cities like Houston. Why or, are you even taking you know a side on this? You're, you're, you're wildly uninformed. Why are you taking a side? What do you mean taking a side? I'm just suggesting that, uh, that you're saying the FTC is going to come. You're taking a side of competition. You're saying they're going to ride to the rescue of Uber here, and I don't know if there's I'm any evidence for that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the Competitive Inst- Enterprise Institute, which is a, a relatively large think tank that yeah. spends a lot of time and money looking into these issues, and people like Mark Scribner, who, you know, it's their job to look at this. You've read an article on the internet, probably the first time you've read it right now, just babbling oh, We've been reading on. things about Uber here and there on the show yeah, throughout been the talking last couple about of years, mm-hmm. and if the FTC cared about uh, free trade, then they would have put the, the the slap down in Austin and Houston and the other cities where Uber's yeah, been banned. Obviously they don't. This reminds They're not me, doing that, Mark. This reminds me, you know what this reminds me of a lot? Like Aereo, that TV company. Yeah, that's right. That's trying to, dis- you know, basically they're going to, uh, you know... Uh, disintegrate the cable network supposedly, or or broadcast television through. Well, the- they can't compete with cable, but what they do right. is they uh, they've got a they've got an array of antennas, little tiny antennas in the city but grade the signal of a television station that uh, that will allow you to watch over the air television on your computer or handheld right, which device, which could potentially incite someone to not buy cable. In theory, it in could, theory. I suppose, but you don't. It, they can only yeah, compete with over the air. Exactly. I mean, so HBO, Showtime, all sure. the you know Comedy Central, all the cable channels won't sure. be on Aereo. But in, 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 I mean, I guess what I'm saying though is that they are sort of um, taking on the, uh, the that industry, you know, and they're disrupting it. And yes. um, it seems like the same kind of disruption that Uber is doing. And I, you know, I would love to. I wish there was a website or some sort of a list out there of these sort of ideas that are just being attacked by the status quo because it really seems like there's so many innovations that have happened in re- in recent years and some get through and some don't that probably should have mm-hmm. but didn't because they're just slapped down by these status quo nanny state eh, we want things to be the same eh, you know like this it, it, and it just it seems like it's happening way too much and there's you know it's obviously crushing innovation well there's all you innovation always faces regulatory hurdles sure. i mean almost always does and you know ultimately innovation tends to win out and i think that's what's being said here i think that yes um you know the communication the, the incredible communication device known as the internet is going to win out over old systems like uh, taxi cabs let's go to the phone sean's in daytona beach you're on free talk live sean how are you guys doing? Hey, what's on your mind, Sean? I, I'm just, I was just calling to add a, a, a point. Uh, just just to make a disclosure, you know, I'm going to be anti-state, libertarian, free market all the way. But as far as like maybe a legal context, something that's relevant. But then again, we know how legal things go. If you're Japanese-American, they'll just throw you in a tournament camp and make up a reason to heck, heck with your rights. But mm. as far as cabs go... You know, states license the uh, privilege to to, uh, to use a vehicle to transport persons or property. So that's a state function. The cities can't trespass, at least in theory, on that. Uh, but what the locales have historically done is regulate, you know, the location within their, quote, jurisdiction and, and the manner in which uh, someone is picked up or the transaction occurs, where we'll put it. So like a taxi cab in a lot of locales is distinguished from like a limousine service because they do street hails and then they have the exclusive rights to use like the airport or taxi stands. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas the other side of it, the, the non-medallion for hire kind of vehicles are going to be like pre-arranged, uh, you know, pre, a pre-arranged pickup. Like right. A, a black car is, like. I guess what they call a limousine or but whatever. Yeah. Black car. So I, I was just calling to add that point. Now I, I don't know about Boston. I haven't got into this story, but you know, that, that is, a a legal distinction in a lot of locales with far as taxi cabs so they don't really you know this uber sounds more like it competes directly in the for hire vehicle market with some pre-arranged pickup 
then that's uh, true. You are pre arranging a pickup. Uh, like you get off a plane, you open up the Uber app, you let them know where you are, and they'll send a car over basically. So, yeah, and, you, and they probably the, the Uber probably ha doesn't use the uh, the airport stand right. for those pickups. Right. I'm sure it doesn't. I'm 100% sure it oh, doesn't. They can no. hang out nearby in a nearby parking lot and then just zip on over. Yeah, when they get the call. So, you know, this essentially sounds like taxi cab drivers complaining about a whole bunch of new limousines mm -hmm. in their town. Pretty much. Right. Yeah, so it's, anyway, a new, it's a new it's a new limousine management system. It's a new way of hiring a, a limo, basically. Yeah, yeah, like a, a mini limo. Exactly. Without yeah. the bar. I'd say you nailed it there, Sean. <laughs> yeah, most people, most of the times you get a limo. Um, you're not getting a limousine with a bar in it anyway. You're getting, a, you know, usually a Lincoln Town Car, Cadillac, uh, DeVille, or something mm -hmm. like that. Sean, anything else you want to share? No, you guys keep on keeping on. Thanks so for I the call I, tonight, man. I don't listen more and, and help the cause more with sharing and other ways of, of helping the, the you know the deal with you guys are all fantastic. Appreciate, Have a great evening. Appreciate the call. Thanks, Sean. And by the way, I had mentioned we were going to talk about the platinum thing that I teased earlier briefly. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page right now, you'll see right there I pinned it to the top. There's a picture of, appropriately enough, a pin, uh, the shiny badge, the Free Talk Live logo, shiny badge. This has never been in existence before. This particular one will never be in existence again. We've made a limited edition of these. There are 100 of them. Uh, Mark and I are taking two, and then a third is going to Davi Barker, the creator of shinybadges.com, because he is also a platinum supporter of Free Talk Live. The other 97 are earmarked for you. If you're a Free Talk Live Platinum Amplifier, you can claim yours by sending your shipping address to me at ian at freetalklive.com. If you are not yet a Free Talk Live Platinum Amplifier, we will offer these badges as a uh, as a perk to you. They say it's our logo on the front, on the back side of the pin. It actually says Platinum Amplifier yeah. engraved, I believe, on the back side. Um, so we haven't gotten ours yet, but the picture is there. It looks awesome. I'm excited about this. If you are not yet a Platinum Amplifier, you can become one at amp.freetalklive.com. Let's say you're a lower-level amplifier like a silver or a gold. You can upgrade to Platinum Amplifier. So anybody who upgrades to Platinum or becomes a Platinum or already is a Platinum, you're all qualified to receive this exclusive limited edition Free Talk Live Platinum Amplifier pin. You can go, uh, if you're on our email list, you got an email about it with a link to the picture. You can also see it on our Facebook, Google+. Plus and uh, Twitter. You should be on our email list, and you can go to news.freetalklive.com to get on that email list. You we sure have uh, We have exclusive offers that go through there in the sense of, of like uh, giveaways and that kind of thing. Yep. Just gave away a set of books from Michael Z. Williamson from Bain Publishing. Let's go to Baxter. He's on the line in Charleston, West Virginia. You're on, and you got just a few seconds. Go ahead, Baxter, with your thoughts. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. Listen, I'm, I'm a new listener uh generally wouldn't listen to free talk live but on a ride home listen to you guys and uh, i just i love the show it's great a lot of free thought a lot of great things going on i don't agree with everything but maybe that's because i've been sprayed with the water like all the other tell you what Bas baxter i want to apologize for the giving you the short shift tonight call us tomorrow night call us a little earlier and i and thanks for your patience tonight we'll be back tomorrow at freetalklive.com this. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. 
We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, May 22nd, 2014. Gold opened today, $1,302. Silver opened at $19.70, and Bitcoin is trading at $519.06. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or give them a call, 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, a move in the wrong direction. That's what the Reform Government Surveillance Coalition, comprised of top tech firms such as Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, are calling a bill touted as a reform of NSA spying. According to Russia Today, the so-called USA Freedom Act would remove the mass storage of phone records from the United States government. Instead, it would require telecommunications companies to store the data. The NSA would then need FISA approval to search the information. The coalition Wednesday issued a statement one day ahead of the House vote on the bill. They say the bill to be voted on is not the same as the one that passed the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees earlier this month. The opposition is focused on the broad definition for how and when government officials can search the stored phone records. The European Commission has announced new charges against U.S. Bank J.P. Morgan, Europe's HSBC, and France's Credit Agricole related to financial rigging. The commission says they're concerned the three banks may have been involved in a scheme to distort prices of euro interest rate derivatives. J.P. Morgan and HSBC deny any wrongdoing. Over 100 arrests made Wednesday as nearly 2,000 protesters demanded increased wages and the right to unionize for McDonald's employees. The protest happened near the fast food giant's Oak Brook, Illinois headquarters, timed with the company's shareholders meeting. According to Business Week, the 125 arrested on trespassing charges included McDonald's employees, members of clergy, and labor leaders. The protest was the latest in a series of demonstrations across the nation as the employees pressed for an hourly wage of $15 and a union. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 